You kept pushing on, but then you went too far. When your ship has sailed and all your dreams are lost, everything is wrong. You feel like it's your fault. Just remember, I will be there for you, baby. Remember, there's nothing out there to get you. Don't forget it. When life in slow motion, just call on me. Just call on me. Welcome everybody into Sim Racing Media tonight. We are well tonight, today, this morning, wherever you are, we are broadcasting the Racers Elite Talladega 500, a full-length featured race here for the Racers Elite series. I am Mike Demoni. Up in the booth, joined with me tonight is Jordan and Shane. Jordan, Shane, how's it going, guys? Going great, you know. I'm really excited to you know see some action, you know, or, you know, in this day, and you know, see uh, see some good close quarters racing. And Mike, I'm excited to be here. 188 laps around the behemoth that is Talladega. We're going to be in for some really great action. I can sense it already. Yeah, we were kind of sitting here talking, watching them practice. Saw these guys do two and three car drafts, so we know the speed is there. A lot of these drivers have made their qualifying laps. We are sitting at, looks like 24 drivers have made their qualifying lap, about, I'll say about 10 left. So almost 35 drivers here to take on Talladega. And it is a little different than we usually see. Usually we're seeing these guys race, you know, they're 75, 88 laps around Talladega. Add another 100 onto that, and that's where we're headed today. So these guys are set to go. Let's see if we can take a peek at some action on track as they're getting ready to wrap up the qualifying session here you got robert hill in the 63 car i uh i've run with him a couple of times in a couple of different leagues he knows how to get the job done around places like this yeah and and with that extra 100 laps or so you know it, it's already a, a survival kind of race you know when you're at 80 or 80 so laps um but having 
an extra hundred onto that. It's a, a true game of survival. Not just that, but there's a fatigue factor as well. Um, usually people are worn out, you know, guys like us who sim race all the time. We're still worn out after 80 to 85 laps. You put an extra hundred on there, the survival is going to be who's going to be non-fatigued at the end of this. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's exactly kind of the point that they're trying to put on a full-length race, let these guys go out and show what they actually can do. Um <clears throat> And the other thing is, we're 100% fuel, unlimited tires, so plenty of uh, pit stop strategies that are going to have to be made, especially with those fresh tires. I mean, it is super speedway racing, so it's not that important, but it never hurts, though. Yeah, and I mean, I've noticed with these next gens, too, uh, you know, after a, a good long run, if you come down and just get fuel and you know don't touch your tires these cars can be a little bit lighter in the rear end from what i you know what i've experienced running different daytona you know special events and stuff like that they tend to be a little bit you know kind of almost like you're swerving down the highway uh so it, you're gonna have to manage a little bit of a difference from just a little bit of a tire fall off but it's not going to be as important as say you know a short track or one of the inter intermediate tracks Oh, that's true. And with the fact that the track temps come down to about 110 degrees, you put a cycle on these tires, you're really going to be sliding around towards the start of that second run if you try to double stint them. So if you're sitting there getting two, two uh, cans of fuel, you might as well get four stickers while you're at it. Yeah, exactly. You might as well try and do anything you can to make up for your time on track. It, it'll also be interesting to see <clears throat> if track position is going to play that big of a role, if somebody elects to uh, just get fuel only on some of these pit stops, try and get back towards the front and stay out of trouble. Uh, we've seen wrecks basically happen anywhere on track, but usually the mid pack is where you kind of don't want to be. No, that's the last place you want to be. So qualifying is always going to be crucial here. But as they often say in the real world, if you start here, you can win here. Yeah, and absolutely. And a big a big thing is you also finding the help, you know, finding somebody that, you know, will work with you and, and stick with you, whether that's a teammate, because I know some of these guys run in, in the in the leagues. But if you're one of the, you know, quote unquote outsiders that, you know, are just running this special event, you got to kind of find somebody that's going to work with you and try to help somebody else out. So they think in their mind, you know, OK, this guy is all about helping me, so I'm going to help him. Exactly. And could we also see some manufacturer alliances as this race wears on? Some guys ain't going to want to push toy push another Toyota or another Ford or anyone that's not their brand. So could we see a manufacturer alliance towards the end of this? Yeah, you definitely could oh. see that kind of come to fruition. And like you were saying, you know, a lot of these guys race, you know, three, four times a week with the Racers Elite Series. So you're going to have those guys who know how the other drivers race so easier to find an alliance there but you also have some drivers that are coming over from different leagues that have raced together so you can see them <clears throat> work together as well as we've got about i'm gonna say 10 seconds left in qualifying so everybody who wanted to make a qualifying run has done so looks like the field's going to be set at 34 drivers here tonight so a lot of drivers getting out on track and it's going to be one of those chaotic uh, starts, I'm sure. But I, I have a really, really strong feeling we're also going to see a lot of single file action once people get uh, sorted out. Yeah, and I mean, that's a huge field. You know, mo most of the official races, your sizes are cut down to probably around half of that, maybe a little bit more than half. So, I mean, it's going to be a lot to manage, you know, that extra, you know, 10, 12 cars, you know, that you have to look out for and just kind of you're racing with your your brain you know not really worried about where you are to start it, and being more worried about where you want to be within that last you know five to ten laps and kind of set yourself up for you know a good finish and you know possibly be in one of those catbird seats where you can possibly leap over everybody if uh, if you know a last lap crash happens and you can kind of shoot the gap and get through yeah definitely so as they are getting their way into their cars we'll go ahead and make a run down the starting grid. We have Mark Jorgensen Jr. and John Higman Jr. Row one, uh, Joe Hudson, Brian Wortman in row two, Brandon Sanfilippo, 
with Gregory Robinson in row three. Row four, Glenn Campbell and Greg Thompson. Row five is Braxton DeWeese and Brian Bliss. Then we've got uh, Andrew Teft and Brandon Honeycutt. Robert Hill Jr. and Dakota Ramsdale. Matt Mettler rolling off P15 with Lee Campbell just to his outside. Then we got <laughs> Greg McConey, Connor Elliott, Truth Hoke, and Charles Van... Um, Van Schlack. Van Schlack. I'll go, I'll go with you on that one. And then we have <laughs> Tyler Harrison, Jason Burdick, Chris Blasey, and Devin Shorts. Rounding out the top 11 in the field. Row 12 is Chris, or, whoa. <laughs> Row 13 is Kirby Wainscott with Kinsley Smith. And then we have what, Joey Gatina? Yep. Troy Thomas, John Dunaway, Allen Bergen. And then we go back to the drivers who elected not to qualifying. William Britton, Rick Webb, Stephen Hines, and Kevin Menapiece. Yeah, and, and you see people typically not qualify at a track like this if they're one of the ones that, you know, kind of want to hang out in the back and, you know, just survive. Uh, I can tell you I'm one of those people. I like to, you know, hang out around the back, you know, so I can see everything happening in front of me and kind of take my evasive action and, and keep my nose clean. And honestly, that's where I'm the opposite. If I qualify inside the top 10, typically I want to hang around up there. But I'm also the one that if it gets starting to get a little too antsy for my liking, I'm not going to be afraid to drop to the back and just let everything unfold. But if I get a chance to stay up front, I'm doing it. Yeah, I, def I definitely agree with that. I think if you qualify in the front, say, four or five rows, you're going to try and get up there as fast as you can, stay up front. Because I think most of the calamity happens you know, mid-pack where you have the drivers that are faster, maybe had a little mess up qualifying run. But as we get set to go here, pace car is in. It is Talladega, so they have to make their way through this trioval and then basically halfway down the front stretch here before they hit that start finish line. Just remember, off of turn four, the real race begins because the start finish line isn't until turn one. And we are getting ready to go green at Talladega. Jorgensen got a pretty big jump, but that is not necessarily a good thing here when you're at Talladega. The, eight, the 81 is going backwards as Higman has a little help on that high line. Yeah, the outside definitely formed up a lot better than what the inside did, so I'm sure they'll get around to coming off a of turn two. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely crazy with the restarts at a place like this where you, you kind of want to almost time yourself with the guy behind you, you know, kind of give him a little bit of a blip of a throttle and be like, hey, I'm going, so that he can stay, you know, tucked up to you so you guys can kind of make a push. Yeah, as you were saying that, uh, watching the Xfinity race last night, that's exactly what they told um, Hallie Deacon to do is get up there on the rear bumper and basically give him a shove when, he, when she's ready to go to trigger that restart. Yeah, you'll see a lot of guys with their hand out the window as soon as they hit that zone. Hey, give me a shot. Let's do this thing. Yeah, and you, we're already seeing a lot of shuffling here. You know, some people moving up to the front. The 81 dropping back all the way to 11th already. You know, it, it's going to be an all-day thing where a lot of these guys just kind of mix and match between lanes and, and, and positions and work their way to somewhere they're comfortable. Yeah, as you see Glenn Campbell pull out of line, work his way to the back. We'll see that happen time and time again here as they're electing to basically stay out of harm's way. Oh. And as we do that, we have somebody around back in the back. Looks like it's Matt Mettler. Oh, well, uh, this is going to change everything already. Uh, let's, let's take a look, see what happened to good old Matt here. Oh, the 14 just like stopped. That looked weird from the get go. Let's let's see if we can. Let's see, Lee Campbell. 
take a look, see what happened here. It's like he gets a run, and then all of a sudden, like, almost breaks. Yeah, and it looks like I think that's what the three thirteen gets into the back of him, and then gets hooked down into the fifty. Yeah, off of the sixteen of uh, McConey there. Yeah, I mean, I know these runs can be a little, little quick on on these next gens. They can kind of, you know, suck up to the car in front of them rather quickly. And I almost wonder if maybe, you know, he got a little bit of contact with that car in front of him and kind of scared him a little bit to where he backed off a lot more than he expected to. And it just once you have a little bit of a stack up in at a track like this, you know, calamity is just going to happen. Oh, for sure. And it already... looks like we got some strategy being played. <laughs> I was going to say that. I, I would have never guessed that the leaders are going to come down on lap three to get fuel. Well, yeah. I, I think the fuel window is only 40 to 42 laps, so this extra couple of laps may be a game changer. Yeah, and a big thing big thing for me is, you know, you don't want to be on the same schedule as everybody. You know, you don't want to kind of pit with, you know, the people in front of you. So any chance you can get off the sequence and have your own game plan, uh, it could go really well for you or it could go really bad. You know, it, it, it's all in, you know, how the how the dice, you know, roll and everything like that. So you just kind of got to pick a, a, a strategy and just go with it. Yeah, I definitely have to figure out what's going to, you know, get you into the best position to win the race. The other thing, though, is you know the drivers are fast who are up front, and they're coming down pit lane. So they're going to wind up basically mid-pack here. So that's going to be something to watch on this restart as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, the charge that these guys are going to have coming back up to the front will be insane, so... Could we see a case of cautions breeding cautions, or will we see them all just line up on the outside and just start, you know, blowing by everybody? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility as they get uh, get stacked back up here. Uh, Brandon Honeycutt looks like he's going to inherit the lead with uh, Gregory Robinson to his outside. So 13 is pretty fast, usually in the uh, Racers Elite Series. So definitely... Uh, Something to look at here. Looks like a lot of the drivers from the Racers Elite are inside that top eight, so they could hook up and make a run to try and get away from the rest of the field here. Yeah, but with those fast guys coming back up yep. to the field, I don't think there's going to be that big of a run that they'll be able to get without getting caught up again. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's also like, you know, those people that, that came down pit road, you know, they could end up as it looks like they're coming back down to get that extra lap, you know, but, uh, you know, they could be a little impatient too, but, you know, not, not on purpose, but just, you know, being from that point spot and then coming back, you know, down pit road and getting that fuel, you, you, you could be like, ah, oh, I got to get up there and they could end up, you know, pushing an envelope a little too far and, and cause it either causing someone else the race or costing them themselves the race. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility as they came down once again to get topped off on fuel. So they'll have to start at the tail end here. But looks like yep, lights are out on the pace car. So they should start getting formed back up here. My only concern with having a fast car in the middle of the pack is, like we've said, possibility of junking somebody else's day or your own but that's is why talladega is also known to be a track of patience you got to be able just to ride for a while know you got a better car than everybody else make the moves when you need to yeah that that first handful of laps you know and more than a handful of laps i just kind of try to picture it as you know that early work uh, work trip work trip in on the highway. You just kind of follow the car in front of you to get there, and once you're there, then you can kind of do what you need to do. Yeah, especially when you're talking 188 laps. Basically want to avoid calamity and have something for the last five or 10 laps so you can try and make your move at the end to win the race. It's gonna be definitely a matter of surviving 
the first day 180 laps here today. And getting off sequence is a really quick way to start uh, planning ahead for that. Pace car is in. Brandon Honeycutt with the button this time. They are stacked up. He already has a car length advantage on that outside lane. We'll see if they're going to be able to time it right here. So they get ready to get to that Geico restart zone, and he is down and away. Gets a pretty big jump there. Looks like Brian Bliss wasn't quite ready for it. But Gregory Robinson doesn't, doesn't have much help on that outside line either. No, and I'd be concerned if I was the leader because that is way too big of a jump. He's going to get eight up by the rest of the pack. Yeah, he's going to have to play some very dangerous defensive uh, maneuvers here if he wants to hang on to that spot because it, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, as they're coming for him right now, looks like the outside is almost split into three different lanes. You have Sam Filippo, out, <clears throat> Andrew Teft, and Kirby Wayne Scott up high with Looks like Menapiece up there as well. Yeah, the inside line formed up a lot better this time around than they did on the initial start. Yeah, Honeycutt Bliss and Kinsley Smith with Lee Campbell back there. San Filippo leading that outside lane. If he can get any momentum, you see the three of Gregory Robinson faded back on the outside and jumped down to the inside lane as soon as there was an opening. We pretty much broke it down into two separate packs now. I'm not surprised it went two separate because it's almost easier that way to manage your race if you're in a separate pack than the top leaders. like Matt Mettler's last car on this lead pack. So the top 18 are able to uh, stay together up here. They've got, we'll say, about two and a half seconds on the second pack, led by Connor Elliott, Stephen Hines, and Dakota Ramsdale. Yeah, and and right, right about where Mettler is, is is typically where I like to be, you know, that, that off spot. You know, he's moving up actually a little further than I would I would prefer to. But, you know, at the tail end of one of the lines, you know, where you can kind of hang out if you want to kind of back off, stretch your foot a little bit, and then get back in the gas. Like, I'm all about trying, you know, to, to keep myself comfortable, you know, like uh, like we were talking about at the beginning. Like, it's, it's going to be a battle of fatigue. So anything I can do to kind of relax myself and, you know, keep myself in a, in a, a, a you know, forward-thinking, you know, process is, is going to help oh for sure and if i'm back here i'm like you guys i'm only running about three-quarter throttle most of it the only time i'm really putting the hammer down is when i'm in the corners after that i'm just kind of cruising and as we were watching back there that outside lane was able to take advantage and basically uh accordion in as sam filippo came down kirby wainscott and andrew teft going to lead this thing And it looks like right now there's about a 2.8 second gap between packs. And as long as they stay together, being in that second pack is not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, no, far from it. They'll end up chasing these guys down because unless this train singles out, that second pack will catch up. Yeah, that second, that second pack is single filed out through quite a ways here. It looks like almost all of them are single file. So if they can stay together, keep the wheel movement to a minimum, they will definitely start to catch this lead pack, especially with how that uh, inside line is starting to kind of spread out just a little bit. They'll wind up catching that draft and be, able, be right on them momentarily. Oh, yeah. I mean, the way, especially the back few cars are still slicing and dicing back here in this lead pack. I got a feeling that second pack will catch up before long. Yeah, and, and having that other line outside, too, kind of pulling you back, you know, as they try to make a run and then you're pulling that line back, you're kind of just slowly giving giving up time to that group behind you. 
Yep, men in peace up here for the lead with William Britton giving him a push. Truth Hope just to the outside of Andrew Teft. So these, these top two drivers started at the tail end of the field and they're already leading the race. So like we said, it's Talladega. Anything can happen. Oh, for sure. I mean, this is just a prime example of it. And we still have the majority of this race left to go. Mettler with a little bump there. That inside line is staying way more uh, organized than that outside line. Got Truth Hoke, Mettler clear on the outside. Bergen in the middle with Lee Campbell there as well. Yeah, I almost wonder if Mettler, you know, felt a little uneasy and said, you know what, I need to back myself back up and kind of fall back here. Uh, looks like what he, that's exactly what he's trying to do. And as we look, get a look as they're coming down the back stretch, they are basically within a second and a half now is that tail pack here. If they stay together, they will reel these guys in pretty quickly here. I mean, it went from two and a half seconds down to a second and a half in not even a lap. So they definitely have some momentum on their side. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting once they get there. I, you know, I'm I'm hoping that they're not too greedy on the on the speed that they have over these guys right now, and maybe try to force it three wide because you know it, it's hard to, you know, distract that primal instinct in your brain when you're racing to to fight for that top spot. So you know, I'd like to see them kind of lift a little bit and kind of just tag on to this, you know, this pack here and and you know work their way through it rather than trying to you know fly by this entire pack yeah it looks like brian bliss got a little loose elected to back out of it went down to the apron and jumped into the tail end of the line because they are three wide up in front of them almost four wide lee campbell on the high side truth hope brandon honeycutt working together down there as well so these guys are all over the track all this is doing is letting that second pack catch up more and those front five cars, front six cars get away. Yeah, I, I talked about that uh, that second group pushing it three wide, but I feel like some of these guys out here, you know, right in the tail end of this field are trying to, you know, force that issue as well. Well, it's like we were talking earlier too. You don't necessarily want to be kind of in the middle of the field because somebody's going to do something, um, we'll call it out of mind, and wind up forcing it three wide in a bad position. And that's exactly what happened there as Kinsley Smith and looked like Robinson were kind of pushing three wide for a while. Yeah, and, and outside of, you know, being pushed in the, in the wrong spot in a corner or just the wrong spot in general, most of the you know accidents and, and and crashes that happen here are from you know two cars going for the same spot at the same time or or just getting loose and 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 touching like it's not normally just someone fully you know losing all sense you know it, it can it can come from just two cars going for the same spot as yeah, there are three wide back here quite a ways yeah, and the unfortunate thing is, with as much ground as you cover in one of these cars in a second, that's why there's so many big ones, is you don't have the time to get on the brakes if something happens in front of you. Yeah, and, and even if you do, you can find yourself, you know, over braking and essentially taking yourself out, you know, in the process. Got a couple cars, lap cars that are made their way around the... Uh, the, the lead pack made their way around, so nothing to worry about there as Greg McConey's to the front. McConey's been looking sharp these last few laps. That car has definitely come to life. Yeah, McConey shows up, going to try and take some money again. He won one of their money races, I believe, a couple weeks ago, so he also uh, he also used to broadcast for us, so, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. Definitely knows what he's doing out on track and loves to have fun. So, 
Well, you still got a long way to go before the pay window opens. Oh, yes. And I believe we have reformed the pack, gentlemen. Amazing how that happens that quick. <laughs> Isn't it? I've noticed with these next-gen cars, the way the draft is with them, you could still be about the length of the straightaway back. And if you have someone pushing you, you could only have two cars, and you can end up catching up to a pack like this. Yeah, you can definitely see how that tends to happen here, especially when, when you also calculate that these guys are probably trying to save a little bit of fuel if they didn't pit and got a little nervous with uh, the four, four or five drivers that came down a couple times. You know, maybe you're not running quite full throttle and you're just in the middle of the field. So that also spreads out the, out the pack and makes it a lot easier. So three one three gets a little bump there. He's able to save it. But that was not where you want to be bumping somebody going through the corner. Yeah, and that's just what we were, t you know, I was I was leading to is that push in that that corner or just in one of those, you know, left or right rear corners of your car. It's not a good place to be, you know, pushed. No, it doesn't matter what vehicle you're driving here. The last thing you want is someone right on your left rear, your right rear going through the center or exit of that corner because you will get knocked around. And our pole setter's looking for the lead once again as he's battled back, sitting P2 right now, right behind Joe Hudson. I feel like if Talladega was a novel, the title of it would be Comers and Goers because that's what we always get here. Absolutely. I mean, we're full of, you know, uh, lead changes and position changes. You know, you go from the start, you know, the point, all the way to the back, back to the front, somewhere in the middle, you know, you, you constantly, you're never in the same position. Yeah, you're definitely not as, it's almost four wide there as Kinsley Smith was almost into the wall. This is about the time these tires are gonna start sliding around along you a little bit more. They've got speed in them, back a little on the warm side. You're gonna have to start making moves and make sure that the tires stay underneath you. Tom, Thomas in the YouTube chat was asking which one of us brought uh, coffee and donuts for the morning race. <laughs> I, th I thought you were on that. I thought that was supposed to be you. No. I think it's supposed to be the rookie, but I got a Dunkin' Donuts like five minutes down the road from me. If I knew that, I would have grabbed some stuff. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll give you a little bit of a pass this time around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll make up for it next race. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, all you guys at Central Time, East Coast. I'm over here in Mountain Time, so, you know. Take the in the wall a little bit. Nope, in the wall, around. Oh, here we Bergen. go, here we go. Teft. Oh, Teft gets tapped again. Looks like uh, Heinz are in it. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, McConey gets into the wall. You have Honeycutt. Bergen gets sent down just a little bit. Well, Bergen sends Tef down just a bit. The 44. Like Glenn Campbell gets around. Yeah, and it, it kind of looked like one of those cases where, you know, Bergen tried to move down a little bit to, uh, you know, avoid Greg on the top side. And unfortunately, the six was there, too. So, you know, he was trying to be mindful of that as well. But, you know, ultimately two cars, one spot and you end up around. Yeah, there's just not much you could really do about that. You see uh, McConey tries to stay out of the way, gets into the wall. Bergen tries to go down to avoid uh, McConey coming off the wall. Looks like the 45 just gets loose. 
Yeah, it looks like maybe the 45 took a little bit of a, an early reaction and uh, kind of got himself a little arrow loose. Which is really easy to do in these next-gen cars. Yeah, and I mean, for the most part, I mean, doesn't look like too much of a, an issue for some of those drivers. You know, Bergen might have a good bit of right and left side, but, you know, Tef, Tef might have a good bit of right side. But ultimately, I think that that's, that's all repairable, and I think they'll, they'll find their, their, uh, their way through. Yeah, I don't see anything that's going to need a whole lot of time on pit road for any of those cars, to be honest. Yeah, definitely this is not the time you want to take that fast repair. No, I mean, as much minor contact as that was, take the uh, minute and a half or so because it's about two and a half, 2.45 for a lap under caution here. Get it fixed up and you'll be fine to go. It looks like everybody came down pit lane. And I think a big thing is, is just making sure that you have that fast repair you know unchecked because i i can tell you there's been a number of times where you know i'm not paying attention and i have that you know fast repair still on and then you know i fix a 20 second you know bit of damage with a fast repair and then end up you know ruining what i need later in the race yeah i've done that before all part of the strategy of 188 <laughs> laps here yeah it's not it's not a great feeling when you use that you know fast repair on something so minimal been there, done that way too many times to count. We'll get stacked up once again, 23 laps in. It's been a relatively furious 23 laps so far. I'm a little surprised. I figured we'd have a little bit of calmness after the start, but you know, it's been a little on the chaotic side so far. Yeah, and I think some of that has to do with how that those two, two packs got split up and then you know, they were able to run them down and, you know, with that kind of momentum and not really knowing what to do with it, everyone has a different plan. So some guys decide to take the run and try to go three wide, move themselves up through the pack so they're not in the middle there. And then you have some of those guys who are just, you know, trying to tag on and, and you know, work their way through the field slowly. And, you know, with such such different, you know, mindsets, you know, it, it's it's difficult to try to you know, work your way through situations and not, you know, get into people. Oh, for sure. Uh, and that's, again, the biggest word we're going to be having. And hey, here's a drinking game for everybody. Strategy. Oh, 100%. Strategy is the most important thing here. Just having a game plan. You know, you don't always stick to the game plan, but at least having that game plan can set you up for a little bit better of success than if you just go in and say, I'm gonna wing it. What is it Triple H has always said? There's always a plan B. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a plan B. I'm glad someone picked up on that. <laughs> There's always a plan B, C, D, E. <laughs> if, you go, if you start getting down to plan W, you got a problem. I mean, it is it is Talladega, so <clears throat> always yeah, always true. plan <laughs> always plan for the uh, the worst and hope for the best here. That's usually yeah, I mean, my plan D. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually usually at a place like this, I wouldn't be surprised if people start you know doing the double letters where you know it's plan A A and plan A B. You know, I think it's about time for that pace car to make that left-hand turn and we get this party back under green. Yeah, 
Hey, Barney, do me a favor and wave that flag for these boys, huh? Green flag is back out. Looks like the 81 of Jorgensen gets that big run again. He's gonna have to play some defense right off the start. You know, in these two lines, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in the middle of, of the two and kind of falling back again. Yeah, it all depends would... on, on how much uh, your friend is behind you there. <laughs> what is up with everyone getting such a jump on these starts? They know they're gonna get eaten up by the pack. Why wouldn't you just kind of lag back a little bit? You know, and I'm also wondering if that could just also be a game plan that some of these people that are behind the leader, you know, they have, you know, they know that they're, they're going to want to go and, you know, they have like a quick count of like just count to one or two and then go and, and kind of try to jump the leader. It'd be a smart move if they did, because if the leaders can get that much of a start on everybody, your best bet is to almost anticipate when the leader tries to go and then just try to follow him up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because you, you want to be able to push him out far. That way you can kind of jump to that high side and, and you know, get around him. But uh, it doesn't also surprise me much if someone's trying to, you know, essentially force that leader to make the error of getting out that far. Seems like it's been going on every restart since. I mean, why would a leader get that big of a jump unless someone's lagging back a little bit? Right, and, and you know, at a point like this, you know, they're not quite going to jump on him and they're not trying to, they're not going to try to go around him right now. But, you know, you get towards lap 170, 176, you know, if we have a late race restart, uh, you know, I see these people doing that and then immediately trying to force it three wide and, you know, kind of get that car stuck in that middle middle lane and you know it's just a sinkhole there you know he's just gonna fall back like a rock all about stacking notes for later speaking of stacking their three wide back here for sixth seventh eighth i see what you did there mike nice one <laughs> i see that Yeah, and it looks like they're they're split into two packs again. I that's a I've never seen it break into two packs that quickly that easily. So I wonder if maybe there's some people in that middle pack that are kind of planning that, you know, with themselves, or if it's just that jumbled up on the start where, you know, this front half can get away, but that back half isn't quite ready to go. I don't know. I think it might have something to do with this mid pack here that keeps wanting to go three wide and. Uh... Everybody else goes, no, I don't want any of that, and just back out of it just a little bit. Because they were three wide for a couple laps there. I think it also has something to do with some of the guys that are up in that front pack dropping back to this middle one saying, you know what, I'm not getting involved yet. You guys go ahead and have fun. You know, and it's only fun, you know, while your car is clean as we get a little bit of contact. <clears throat> Somehow they keep it all straight, and we're going to see if he can merge that back up into, into the track. San Filippo and Kinsley Smith, door to door. That and, was a whale of a save. Yeah, and truthfully, I do not know how they kept that, you know, that kept them going straight because, you know, that's, that's not a good position to be in at all. Let's take a look real quick while they're doing that. Kinsley Smith goes down to the inside. Three wide. Oh, the 12 off of the 313. And Filippo just kept it going straight. Yeah, uh, I don't know how they work that magic. Uh, that's that's insane. With the rack and pinion steering in these cars, he had to have some lightning fast hands to keep that thing straight. Yeah, that that is one thing that you do see as Matt Mettler gets a run on the inside. <clears throat> you'll see these guys start to wreck, and then all of a sudden it's like that rack and pinion just grabs hold and throws them into the wall. So having uh so having the ability to keep it straight is just amazing there. 
you only get one chance to save these cars. You don't get two. Well, the 23 basically told uh, McConey that he needed to move. You know, McConey works his way back into that spot, but he definitely gave him a shot and forced McConey down to that lower side. Yeah, McConey's kind of deciding where he wants to be as he slides down in front of Honeycutt. We saw those two cars working well earlier. Time to see it again. Yeah, and that is the, that is the thing at Talladega. Sometimes you can see the two and three car packs. If they are hooked up correctly, they can make a lot more time than, you know, four and five car packs if they're having a little bit of issues. Yeah, it's about how well you're able to tighten everything up and stay behind somebody. You can have a five, six car pack, but if they're strung out and a three car pack catches them, the reason is that three car pack is tighter. Definitely as we're on board with Honeycutt. As he pushes McConey to the lead. Yeah, and they've been very good at being nose to tail and, you know, giving the right shots where they need to. So I, I'm not surprised that they made that bottom work and, and move up rather quickly. And you see that outside lane basically in the third lane clear up on the wall. We are about 10 laps in on this tire run here. Looks like Joey Gad is trying to give that 81 a great shove through the top of this tri-oval, trying to keep him up front. Definitely trying to get something working here in that outside lane, just can't seem to get lined up, and that seems to be the biggest problem with the 81. He just hasn't had anybody that's uh, been able to hook up and get him pushed towards the front here. No, and unfortunately, that's going to be a downfall for later on in the race is people, people keep a list of who they can work with and who they can't. Now the 83 of Dakota Russell went clear from the high side, clear to the bottom, got behind Sean Dunaway, and is going to try and push that 01 towards the front as McConey got stuck in the sucker hole, and he is going backwards now. Yeah, it looked like he got Oh, Kinsley out. Smith just slid him into the wall. Yeah, and he hit hard. Yeah, and it seems like Smith just caught him at an awkward point where he was definitely faster than McConey, but sometimes at a time like this I feel like you just got to kind of take it and back off and you know kind of save yourself while saving the guy in front of you yeah because you can see McConey just lost all speed I mean there's nothing he could do about it here lost the draft 313 is just shoving him completely through the 16 15 is trying to go around and the 313 is just Shoving like crazy. Yeah, and the three just had nowhere to go, and the three, the 15, and the 16 all stack up. Let's get to... And that's the unfortunate thing is McConey got shuffled square out and put square in the sucker hole, and this is what can happen. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing McConey could do. He kept the wheel straight. I mean, yeah, you, you can see he's he's not really wanting to go anywhere. You know, he, he, if he was, he would have been a little further up and probably split him and that car on the outside. But I, I, I kind of think he was trying to lay back and then that 313 on his rear bumper just wasn't really allowing it to happen. Yeah, I think the 313 definitely... Uh, Definitely was just pushing for all he could there and not uh, not really paying attention to what, what was going on in front of him. But And the thing about these next-gen cars with the rounded-off bumpers, they don't line up as well as the COTs did or even the Gen 6s did, so it's a lot easier to hook somebody.
So third caution of the race on lap 35 here. Looks like we still have everybody in the race. 34 drivers took the green and we still have 34 out on track. I'd be interested to see who all has taken fast repair so far. <laughs> well, it looks like the 81 and 5 both came down and probably got fuel only. 72 and 8 probably got four tires and fuel. And then the 42, Kevin Menapace also looks like he just took uh, fuel. Yeah, I almost wonder if Greg's trying to just get most of that damage fixed instead of burning that fast repair because he's been down pit road for quite a while now. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see, you know, two or three stops out of that 16 car to try to fix the damage. So we'll see if he gets yeah. out here before the pace car. Yeah, and I was just about to say that like I don't think I'd really be that worried if I went a lap down here because you know if with a place like Talladega you're gonna get those cautions so you know he could easily you know get you know a lap down and, and get that lap back as long as he stays out of trouble. And he looks like he just beat the pace car, so he will stay on the lead lap. So. Lights are out. We should get uh, stacked back up here. My my question is going to be, will we see the 81 try to get out to a big lead again? And will the 5 try to actually slot in behind them? Yeah, they seem to be working pretty well together. We'll see if, uh, if that is what's going to happen here. I'm hearing correctly from race control. Looks like the 313 is going to uh, get a penalty for that caution. So we'll have to start at the tail end here. Yeah, I was pretty aggressive by the uh, 313 for what was going on there. I mean, it, it was a little on the unnecessary side, especially this early in the race. Yeah, and it, we've seen some some people be a little a uh, little impatient, and I think some of them need to dial it back just a touch. You know, we've got plenty of time to go. Pace car makes the left hand turn. Barney's got the green flag in hand. We're about to reset this party again. Did we get a little different restart this time. Not really. He's still got a pretty big jump, but the five's going to slide down behind the 81, and they are hooked up once again. That's what I figured was going to happen this time around. The 81 got out to that jump. He was going to work with uh, the five and try to get that top line going again, and here we go. Now the eight and 13 down to the inside, going to try and take the lead here as they come down the backstretch. Looks like that middle line is trying to form up. Well, that outside line, the 81 and five keeps going clear up to the wall. So leaves that middle wide open, almost like they're daring somebody to try and go into the middle. It seems like it, but you also get that uh, push of air off the wall that helps you uh, get a little bit more speed out of the car. So they might be trying to get a little extra speed while they can too. 
as the eight of Brian Bliss leads that lap, but the outside line battles back as uh, Bliss got a little too far away from Honeycutt there. Yeah, that inside line isn't exactly as tight as what they've got up top with the 81, the five, and the 43. Yeah, they seem a little bit, a little bit more calm right now. I know, I know that we had a little bit of that, that gap trying to kind of dare those guys to go to the middle, but you know, they seem a little less, you know, anxious and a little less restless right now. Yeah, definitely. When you look back from the leaders looking through turn four, there, it's not quite as uh, problematic as it was earlier here. See the double zero in Truth Hope working that outside lane. A 53 stuck in the middle, or is that the 63 stuck in the middle? 63. Yeah, that's the uh, 63 Robert Hill stuck in the middle. Although, I mean, they're, they're kind of giving themselves a little bit of a... <laughs> you know, kind of statement of, you know, we're going to stay right here. We're not going to fall because, I mean, they were under fire from that outside line back by where, you know, Allen Bergen and, and Matt Mettler were, and now they've kind of moved a little bit up towards the front there. They're almost four wide coming down through the trioval there. Yeah, just to, just as I said, you know, we le we looked a little bit more calm. You know, now they're starting to, uh, you know, make me rethink that statement. Commentator's curse is real. <laughs> yeah, it is. It definitely is. Seen it happen. <laughs> I've made it happen, you know, <clears throat> on several occasions in one of the other leagues. Oh. Oh, can the fifty save it? Devin Short's got a little bump there. <clears throat> Heck of a and save there by. He's going to lose this group, and he's going to—he's going to be begging for one of those cautions here now. You know, he's—he's he's got someone coming up behind him, but you know, unless the two of those can get linked up and stay nose to tail and and actually push each other, he's going to lose a lot of time here. Yeah, yeah. you're going to be hoping for that caution to come out. I think what happened to him was the fact of uh, the 63 was trying to merge back up after dropping back a ways, and I think they just touched. Yeah, they were three and four wide. It's been a, a little hairy about mid-pack. 3-1-3 three, three, stuck in the middle again. We've seen I, him in the middle more often than anything else these days. Yeah, I, I would like to strike my comment from the record of these guys are being more calm. <laughs> three, one, 3 slides down in front of San Filippo. Greg Thompson, that is, in the... 313. Braxton DeWeese in the. Well, it's supposed to be the 25, but he's repping the 8 on track. If he can get that middle line to go. Yeah, I mean, he's holding strong, and he's got some helpers behind him, you know. I, I, he's making it work. And that's the big thing with the drafting is you got to have the right cars to make the line work, whichever one you're in. You've seen it all day with the top and bottom. Now we're starting to see the middle come into its own. I think the middle will work out if that uh, outside line keeps staying up in that wall. They'll give him plenty of room because they're almost four wide. Yeah, he's not really looking to give up that, that middle line. He said, this is my line now. You guys abandoned me. <laughs> it's my line. As he but, goes up you know, to the does, high side now. Go up high. <laughs> I mean, when, when it's four wide, you, you kind of want to back out just a little bit there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him try to get some people to go with him there in the middle again here here shortly. You know, it, it's wide open for him, so. 
Yeah, it's definitely and one of those things you want to try early in the race to see if you can do it and then be like, okay, the run's there if I need to. I can I can maybe take a take a trip there if I have to, but um, you want to kind of stay out of trouble. And the middle line is definitely has brought trouble more often than not today. And for an update on the 50 car, he is currently nine seconds back at the tail end of this pack and losing about seven tenths a second a lap. Yeah, he's he's praying for a caution at this point. He is he is very, very much just dying for that caution. Yeah, they are hooked up together. It looks like he has a good bit of right front damage, though. I do I do see that. It kind of looks like it's a little buckled in there. Not too bad, but you know, I, I do think I see some separation between that hood flap and 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 the hood there. Yeah, he's got some right front damage for sure. And these, so, you know, and, yeah, these cars are very aero sensitive. Yeah, and and I'd almost be trying to talk that seventy four into going around me so I can kind of get that air over that spot and you know i think they might make a little bit more time if they could quickly and effectively switch out here yeah they're now officially 13 it's a uh, about an 11 second gap right now between the pack wing campbell jumped up in front of the 81 and he is trying to get a taste of the lead here. I've raced with Glenn on many occasions in other leagues. This guy is very effective on plate tracks. It doesn't surprise me seeing him up front. Now that two-car tandem. Don't look now, but Greg Thompson jumped to that high line and he's going to try and push there as well. Campbell goes down to the inside in that 31 machine. Brian Bliss behind him. Yeah, Thompson's been finding his way <laughs> into everything. He's finding his way up front. He's finding himself in a little bit of messes, but uh, he's definitely pushing this car as hard as he can. Titans down on the five. If Kevin Menopis nope. goes, I was going to say, I wonder if Kevin's going to try and push it four wide there to try and get around the 313. Did not, but they are still three wide. Oh, grabs a little bit of the fence there. Oh, that's not going to be pretty. No, they kept it straight. You know, good, uh, good driving on, on multiple people's parts there for sure. Thompson slides down again. Is trying to side draft off of everything in sight. But Ramsdale jumps up to the high line. Squeezes his way in there. You know, I'm looking at this 15 car and I'm reminded 2001, 2002 with DEI's dominance at Talladega. Just looking at that paint job. That is really nice. Oh, and the 313s. Kind of pushing, uh, I can't see the number there. Looks like the 64 was kind of pushing him down below the apron a little bit there. <clears throat> I have a three feeling one. this 3 1, I was like, I was gonna say, I feel like this 3 1 3 could probably just sit here and, and side draft the pace car on the way out of the pit lane. He turns down coming um, through the corners pretty here fast. There it goes. Mettler around. Yeah, I, 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 that's on him again. He's just, his side draft work isn't the greatest. Uh, he, he gets close, and, and then it's like, I, I don't know if it's, you know, the car getting sucked into it or, or what, but his side drafts are, are violent. He is not making any friends out here today. That's for doggone sure. He's, that inside car is right on the yellow line. Stays below the white. And he just comes down on him. What was he even thinking? I, I don't know. And they both go up and Mettler gets connected on it. 
Yeah, and, and Mettler, unfortunately, just there for, for the ride at that point. I mean, I get side drafting people, Talladega, want not you know not wanting to go further back than where you were probably going to end up going, but this is too aggressive. Yeah, let's see. A different look here, if I can. We'll go this way. Like you can just see. You can still see the white line, and then all of a sudden. I mean, I get that he's probably following Kinsley, but. Like, there's there's no no place for him to go there. There's no excuse for this. There really isn't. I mean, that's just, that's asinine. Yeah, I mean, I could see trying to be that aggressive later in the run, but, you know, coming to the, it's coming to like the white or, you know, the last five or so laps trying to get yourself up a few positions. But, you know, with over 130 laps still to go, like, it just doesn't make a whole ton of a lot of sense for me. It, it really doesn't. I mean, there's, again, as you just said, five laps to go. We can see that happening, but... This early in the race, that's just stupidly aggressive. Looks like Allen had an issue. Looks like he might have missed the shift, blew up his engine. Yeah, and that's that's unfortunate because that's going to be a long tow in, and you know, oh. even if he still has his fast repair, it might it might be uh, kind of hard to rebound from that. Looks like the 81 is the first one out of pit road again. I mean, they off of having number one spot. Yeah, it looks like he's just been taking fuel. Spent uh, seven and a half seconds in his box, so. Have to see what uh, RC's call is on that caution, but. I'm sure it'll be another EOL. Oh, you would assume so. I mean, this is just getting crazy. And from what I'm looking at, the track temp has gone down further. We're only at 99 degrees for a track temp right now. So I think the tires are starting to get a little bit more life in them. Yeah, and, and more <laughs> grip is, is going to be great. You're going to be able to, you know, make some more moves and have the car under 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 control a lot easier than, you know, when we were up there towards 107, 108, you know, 108. You know, you're going to have more of a, a tire where it's kind of more shredding than, you know, burning away. Yeah, it's going to be a more balanced... Uh wear out than what it was earlier on in this race. So it looks like Allen's probably getting a tow back. I think Jason uh, Burdick is either out or getting a tow as well as he is sitting on pit lane. Listen to the all that the racing deal. I'm Don't. a little surprised by that. <laughs> it's 
something tells me though the tower will kind of keep an eye on that 313 a little bit harder now. Yeah, might have to might have to go have a meeting with race control afterwards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ferguson Honeycutt gonna lead him on down here. Lights yeah, and I'll, I'll, and I was going to say, uh, I wonder if we see that same kind of jump we've been seeing, you know, where that lead car gets all the way out there. You know, it's it's kind of interesting to me. If I was behind that 81, I would literally be, be pushing him into the Geico restart zone because I'd want to stay as close as possible to him. Well, that's kind of what I was watching here when I get this camera on the rear bumper of the 81 as they get ready to head to that restart zone and nobody seems to be pushing him you can see the gap that he has as they hit that restart zone and he's away oh uh, the 44 tried to make a stab at it but uh just wasn't all the way there but i think the 81 learned because it's not as big a gap as what it has been yeah it, it almost seems like he you know half throttle and kind of rolled into the throttle rather than stabbing at the throttle and you know gave that trailing car a little bit more of a hey i'm going yeah definitely definitely seemed like it was a hey come on keep up with me and uh nothing really happened there but the five jumps down to the inside and it's going to slide in front of the 81 see if this uh works the right direction Joy Gatina in that five car. Those two have been hooked up all race long from what I can see. And here we go again. Yeah, and I mean, they're they're hooked up. I mean, he is on that car. I mean, even throughout the entire corner. Now that's, that's talent to me. If you can stay on a car that tight through a corner, and not hook him that is that is phenomenal talent in my opinion because that is not that's not something simply done it it takes a minimal little bit of error to bump that car in the corner and send him around yeah you're, you're literally shoving the guy the entire way around that's that's skill right there it's like everybody kind of learned from the last one is almost the whole field is pretty much single filed out almost We might actually be in for a chance to see some single file action, you know, and everyone's starting to calm down a little bit. Well, we were talking about the pit window and such, and we pretty much have been able to throw that out the window because they've had cautions too quickly to actually get a full fuel run. Yeah, when it comes to the pit window, just call me Larry Mack on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Alan and I kind of do that when we sit there and talk about these guys racing during the week, and we're like, oh, well, the pit windows, such and such, and then all of a sudden, everybody just comes down right after we say it. Right. Like, okay, well, I guess we're close enough. Yeah, give or take a few laps, take credit for it. <laughs> Hudson leading the outside with Honeycutt behind him. Yeah, and, and we, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably jinxing jinxing it again, but you know, I, I feel like they're learning a little bit, you know, restart after restart. And as I say that, they're three wide, but they they seem to each time that we restart, that it takes them a little bit longer each time to start kind of mixing around and, and trying to find their way to the front. Yeah, I definitely think that's kind of, something that happens here you also have yeah, have you also have um it's like the teammate of the 81 we've run in that high that extremely high line in that 83 dakota ramsdale like he kind of slides up there gets clear on the wall just like the 81 was doing so kind of leaves the middle wide open yeah and and 
I wouldn't be surprised if he can get around that, that 43 there if, if we see those two find a way to each other. Kinsley Smith pushing that 83 for all it's worth after being involved in that early race incident here, but he is trying to get his way back to the front. And I'll say, I mean, he's he's definitely, uh, you know, running such a throwback scheme. He's definitely racing like a throwback racer, you know just kind of pushing you know he's also really good at being on the tail end of that that 83 just like the 81 is on the five you know just right on that tail end all the way around this track and you know kind of just being off enough through the corner that you don't know, hook him yeah now the now they're going backwards hopefully they got a little separation there And that's that's what I think the the five and uh, you know and Jorgensen have down is that sticking together as tightly as possible that you know the cars behind them can even kind of lay back a little bit more than you know say in that outside line where they're all kind of spaced out you know just those two being so tucked up together it's kind of throwing that air clear over you know two three two or three cars behind them. And I have Sam Filippo Honeycutt. And Kinsley Smith working together on that extremely high line. This looks like that inside line is way more established than what the outside is right now. Yeah, they, oh, definitely, they definitely have hooked up the way they, the way they've been driving, and nobody's been able to get within probably three car lengths. Yeah, and, and that severe outside line can work. You know, we've seen it in, you know, the, the Cup Series and, you know, in real life. You know, kind of using that outside line a lot more than in previous years. But, you know, you really have to be really tight together or have a larger pack up there to really make it work to perfection. And honestly, I think that's just the nature of the way these cars are designed is the further up the track you are, again, it's that buffer of air coming off the wall, using that to your advantage. It's almost kind of like having a side draft off of the wall itself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Inside line is still pulling away a little different uh, setup there's a 43 and 5 pull out in tandem go to the high line and they're going to take the lead Hudson and Gatina one thing I'm seeing out of that five is it doesn't matter who's around him who he's, who he's got there working with him he can work with anybody so he'll, he'll be a threat as this race gets down to the end stages He's definitely been able to push whoever is in front of him to the front. And basically been able to accept a push from almost anybody as well. So Hudson and Gatina now lead that inside line. San Filippo on the high line with uh, Honeycutt, Kinsley Smith back there trying to make it uh, make that high line start to come together here. I'm also a fan of the look of that five car. That paint scheme is clean. I'm I'm digging that. Black and silver HendrickCars.com Chevy, that is nice looking for a paint job. You know, and it's always great when you see these guys come out here with these custom paints or, you know, uh, a touch of touch of, you know, their own interpretation of a of a real life scheme and it it shows just the true creativity the true creativity that these guys have along with the skill of racing. At the end of the day, all paint jobs look good in Victory Lane. That's why you want to get it there. 
Absolutely. And Filippo leading that outside lane, got it to the point. We are in a couple different packs here. We've got a pack that's about three and a half seconds back as these guys just split and go every which direction here. The 81, three wide on the high side. Still three wide. Oh, the five oh, off the 45 Katina. bumper. What a save. Just as we were talking about that, just that little bit of a bad bump, and that's uh, that's what happens there. So. Well, the good news is he's got that pack behind him, so I don't think he'll have a, a huge loss time-wise. Yeah, no, I was just talking about that. Going to talk about that other pack that's about three and a half seconds back as he is going to be probably taken over by it momentarily here. He's going to have to find his way to filter in there. And it looks like he'll do just that. But then we have a pack that's about 10 seconds back here, led by Lee Campbell, has Mettler in it, uh, Hill, Van Slick, Rick Webb. I think these guys are just kind of chilling right now. Again, it's still early enough where they can just relax. I wouldn't be surprised to see them back up towards the front by the end of this. Greg McConey led a few laps, but he is now in danger of going a lap down as you can see the leaders closing in. Yeah, and I can still see a little bit of damage on that car, so that that, that brings me to either he doesn't have his fast repair or he is saving it, you know, hoping for you know, maybe to cat tag along with this front pack here and fight for a lucky dog spot or, you know, kind of find his way into some luck. Yeah, right now he is sitting in the lucky dog spot. So we'll see if he he's able to get in on this pack here. Doesn't look like he does at the moment, but he's still the first car a lap down. Looks like he's trying to stay out of the way probably has some damage let's see if we can get a, get a look at it yeah it looks like a little oh, bit yeah. of damage yeah that right front's crinkled pretty good so. yeah and uh he's probably gonna try to wait until the last possible second wait for that that relative to clear up and you know just tag on try to tag on to the back of this last pack here that way he's out of the way and he's not really where people are going to be fighting because this this backpack's going to be more trying to stay in line and catch them rather than, you know, try to force an issue. Yeah, it looks like these leaders have kind of settled down a little bit to uh, use the term that Jordan keeps using that uh, causes problems here. But back here for that next little two car tandem here looks like they kind of lost the uh lost that lead pack they're almost two seconds back right now but they have the uh the second pack coming up on them as well so no real nothing really lost i mean as long as you stay on the lead lap here at talladega you'll be fine because you know eventually one of those uh yellow flags are going to fly Yeah, I mean, it's it's a given that somewhere, somehow, someone's going to, you know, just get in get in, in the way of someone or they're going to touch or, you know, we should be closing in here shortly-ish on, on some pit stops. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, we're about eh, only 18 laps. So, I mean, we're not as close as, you know, I was originally thinking. But, you know, with this green flag run, we could see them here in the next 10, 15 laps getting a little closer to wanting to start thinking about pit stops and uh you know once once they decide to come down you know there's always the chance of someone getting on the brakes a little too hard or or not enough and causing an accident right there at the entrance of pit road and kind of just jumbling everything up yeah because you gotta get these things from 195 196 miles an hour down to 55 for pit road it's real easy to lock up a tire especially with the way these brakes are on these cars 
I mean, if I can do it on 95, I think they can do it at Daytona, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And I know how tricky 95 can be. I mean, that's that's essentially what these tracks are. It's just, you know, traffic at double the speed, you know? Oh, well, pretty much, yeah. Glenn Campbell working that outside. Going to drag that 81 back towards the front. And look who's back up there with him. I knew it wasn't going to take long. Joy Gatina in that five car found that 81, and here we go again. Yeah, they got pushed back to that second pack, and that second pack caught these caught the lead pack in a hurry. And now they are back out front. Again, it's the strength of those three cars right there, uh, the 44, 81, and 5. It's just how strong those guys are. Side line coming back though with San Filippo going back to the point. But he will have his hands full when they come off of the corner as Glenn Campbell gets a big push there from Jorgensen. Yeah, and I'm I'm really seeing that Jorgensen knows how to push. I mean he is definitely someone that I'm gonna watch here towards the end of this race, you know. I know we still got a long way to go and anything can happen, but if he finds himself in that third or second place spot in a line, I, I'm probably going to lean towards him because he's he's able to get right to the bumper, push as hard as he possibly can. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to, you know, make a, a little back off and, and kind of shoot himself around somebody. He, he really definitely looks like a plate racer in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely looking strong in that 81 car. I wouldn't be surprised to see him make some more moves before long. Yeah, he definitely seems to have that uh, next-gen car on rails as he's trying to figure out, you know, where he wants to be. He's kind of been up and down, like you said, comers and goers. But he seems to be able to work with almost anybody, so it probably is not going to be a big deal when it comes down to it who's in front of him. Yeah, right. and if 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 that person in front of him can handle, you know, a shove, because I know I know me, I can be a little weary on getting shoved, but if that person in front of him can take a shove, he's gonna push with all of his heart and all of his soul and every inch of horsepower that that motor can put. And I can guarantee you, he's got a notebook stacked up right now of what he's able to do because of how many different positions he's been in in this race already. Yeah, as that two-car tandem gets out to a little over a quarter of a second. And, you know, like, he's got it down, in, in my opinion, that, you know, he's peeking out, getting a little bit of air. Now he sees the 12. He tries to make the block there. Not quite in time, but, you know, he's, he's staying tucked up under and, you know, still getting his air just off the sides of that, that, that uh, car right in front of him. Yeah, like, like kind of like what we were talking about earlier as the 45 almost takes out uh, Glenn Campbell there. Campbell had to do a little bit of evasive maneuvers there. But as we were talking earlier, you know, you got these guys that race together week in, week out. And that's the front three right now, San Filippo, Honeycutt, and Smith. So, And honestly, I think the 81 is just sizing people up right now. You know, and I'm, I'm starting to see, I did not notice here until, you know, probably about a lap or so ago, the three of those cars, the 12, 13, and 15, they all have that DEI stripe. So, you know, they, they, they're they working together trying to make themselves, you know, uh, the control cars here. Yep, they are part of, in the Racers Elite Series, they are Driving Extreme Incorporated. I like it. That is, that's a really <laughs> nice touch to make a 
make that uh, personal. Rudy one trying to figure out where he wants to be. He's running basically half inside, half outside, trying to figure out which car is going to give him the best push here, best chance to get some momentum as he stays, I'll say, in the second lane right now. Makes me wonder if those top three cars have that rad motor underneath the hood. And I just severely dated myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and somebody that I'm kind of looking at here is is that eight car of Deweese. He keeps kind of finding his way like through this field a little bit, you know, kind of finding a little bit of runs, you know, kind of maybe forcing somebody a little bit out of line just to kind of move up a little bit. But, you know, I keep seeing him kind of pop in and out of frame here and there. And, and he's definitely somebody that I'm watching here. Yeah, he seems to be able to hold the wheel pretty steady, especially when he's in the middle, as it looks like McConey goes another lap down. But he seems to be able to hold that wheel pretty steady in the middle, not drift down too far, not drift up you know, too high. So if it comes down to it and he can get a run in the middle, look for him to go there. Yeah, and I, I, I would not be surprised if he finds a way to, you know, kind of basically make the lane himself because you know he doesn't seem afraid to to use a little bit of bumper not not anything crazy where he's going to cause an incident but you know sticking his nose in somewhere that he's confident you know kind of forcing that line to to begin you know i i wouldn't be surprised if once we get down to crunch time him kind of forging his own path to the front three Trying to get a run here. The 45 slides up in front of the eight, or the five slides up in front of the 83. And the 83 is all over his bumper. Can't quite keep it steady as he's sliding up and down the bumper. If he gets a little, little bit of a run, that could wind up being a bad bump in a hurry. Yeah, we see the five come back down, squeeze in front of that 81. Yeah, you know Gatina and Jorgensen like working together. The five knows that... Uh, the 81 can give him a push, and that is exactly where he winds up. Something tells me we're not going to be done calling those two this race, believe me. I tend to agree, as they've been pretty much the class of the field. They've been able to go to the front, to the back, and pretty much anywhere they want, unless they lost the draft for a little bit, got hooked back up, and just drove right back to the front. And it sounds like these guys are going to be catching another pack of cars here before too much longer. Yeah, it looks like they are starting to come into this three-pack trio here of what Schwartz, Robinson, and Wortman. They are the next cars that are on the uh, tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, not too far away at all. Yeah, ever since getting wrecked, that 50 car has not been the same. Yeah, there, there's a few that once they got touched, I don't, I'm don't. i assuming they elected not to take the faster pair, hoping for a couple quick cautions, and the cautions just never came. And guess who's up front? That eight car, Braxton Deweese. Yeah, and he just kind of stayed in line and just kind of kept working himself through and like I said I'm I'm not surprised that he found his way to the front another another driver looking to get towards the front is Kirby Wainscott Wainscott has the Spongebob scheme on point tonight no that is Patrick yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I saw the opportunity to drop such a cheesy line I had to is mayonnaise an instrument? <laughs> oh, man, I'm dating myself now. Well, that wasn't even all. 
an option for a cartoon when I was young. So, anyway. <laughs> And then a piece goes from the bottom to the top, trying to get some momentum built in there. Slides back behind Andrew Teft. Yeah, once again, we see that 81 and 5, you know, linked up. And once he gets to that bumper, I'd be looking for those two to find themselves right back into the front, you know, like they were. You know, the 83 pops up there, and, I, you know, those three, those three seem to be together, so I wouldn't be surprised if you see those three find their way as they make a third lane and say, we're, we don't want you in front of us. Yeah, three wide in the middle goes Katina. Yeah, they Hines up front now. They basically tried to shuffle Stephen Hines out of there. They didn't really want him in front of him, so they just kind of went to the outside, and then they pulled a little bit of a trickery where, you know, they faked the outside and go inside, and, you know, that worked out for the five for the moment. But this 81 and 83 are locked up with the with the two car, and they're just they're sailing away now. And just like that, the eight moves himself up, you know, right in the line, uh, that uh, top line, maybe trying to make a little bit of a jump too. Oh, it's about to get tight with these lap cars. Oh, it is definitely. I do not know how he kept that straight. How in the world? I don't know what in the world the, uh, the 50 was doing there. I think he was indecisive on which way he wanted to go to get out of the way. That just about set off the big one. Yeah, and that, that would have taken out just about everybody we've been talking about today where they, that would have been that whole little, the, that little pack. And I mean, they would have had nowhere to go because they were all starting to kind of check up and go two and three wide. And that would have been, that would have been just about every contender we've been talking about today. Yeah, the, it looked like uh, Greg Robinson knew where he was going to go he stayed up high stayed out of the way and i think the 50 was going to go down to the bottom but then he saw the three stay up high so he tried to go back up top but that uh, pack just got on him way too fast and that could have been uh over in a hurry especially for the 81 is he almost got trapped yeah and the, the fact that he could hang on to that i mean that's 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 not hard or not easy to do in you know the more stable cars in my mind of well uh, the gen 6 or the xfinity cars but to do that in the next gen that's insane that was at 195 miles an hour he made that save yeah i would have probably just locked it down to the left and hoped that nobody touched me on the way down it looks like the two got shuffled out finally they were trying to shuffle him out for a while and they finally were able to do it, got him stuck in the sucker hole, and now he is behind the lap car of Greg Robinson here. You know, our own Alan Bergen says he won the race to the beer stand, and it kind of made me think of that scene from Talladega Nights where the guy's sitting on the, uh, the table eating the chicken sandwich. Yep. I'm gonna finish this sandwich, make a couple of phone calls, I'll be back to drive the car. <laughs> That's Alan right about now. Uh, make sure you send up a few more after the race, Alan. We'll need them. Got Sean Dunaway here. Working with the, looks like a lap car. Trying to get back <laughs> towards the lead pack. And then you have this other pack here of Lee Campbell, Hill, Blasey, uh, looks like Connor there. Then everybody else. And they're still battling up here. I would event, I would say that they're going to have to, uh, they're gonna have to uh, single file out pretty quickly here unless, uh, unless they're gonna try and stay out one more lap to make it to the 
pit stops here because you don't want to be trying to pit from the high lane. No, that's the last thing you want to do is try to come down in front of three lanes of traffic and then slow down because that's a fast way to get run over. You know, it looks like we're 47 laps, not 47, 37 laps in, and they might make it somewhere around 40 to 47. I believe somewhere in there is going to be where, where that uh, window is going to come calling. Yeah, I would assume probably the next stand full laps, we'll start to see this field single file out. And there will definitely be a lot of deals being made in the meantime. Yeah, they're definitely trying to figure out what what they what they can do, who they can come down with, when they're going to come down. It's all about that one word you said in the drinking game strategy. Take a shot. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have the first driver blink here. First handful. Oh, oh there they go. Oh. There they go. Who didn't so see much that coming? Bunch of little... <laughs> so, so much happened right there that I can't even speak right now. There were cars everywhere. We knew that was bound to happen. I mean, we, we were kind of talking about it. If we were going to be green flag pit stops, what was going to happen? And that's exactly what happened. You know, I, I would like to see the nose of that eight car because I, I would almost uh, certainly believe that he needs a change of shorts on this pit stop. I think someone's going to need a whole new front clip because I saw one of them go flying. You ask and yeah, you shall I receive. I'm not sure if it was like a 10 car or I, I believe it was orange. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my Lord, it was the, the 50. 50. <sighs> Oof. Ooh. Wow. I got, <laughs> I got goosebumps watching that car come in the frame because that's, <laughs> oh, that's I'm... one of those things where someone was definitely over top of you for that. Eighty-three gets it. Looks like Kinsley gets around. Theft. Looks like the front clip is off that white car that just started pulling away. Oh, eighty-eight tried to go up, and the eighty-three was right there. Wow. It hits, oh, the 50 just gets shot down the track. And now the eight, uh, the eight needs to play the lottery with that right there. Cause I mean, he was dead to rights going to get run over by the 50 there. And somehow it just, it's, oh man, I don't even have any words for that. And the doggone thing is the 50 got shot down the hill by the three. Yeah. Let's take a look here from Andrew Test's point of view. I don't think he's got a whole lot of damage. I mean, it'll be fixable. But that 88 is going to need a lot of work done to it. Yeah. Now, now you're about halfway through the race. Do you elect to try and take your uh, faster pair, or do you try and pit farm it and try and stay on the lead lap, trying to make your way around here? I think it's one of those where it's all circumstantial on what happened there. You know, someone like the six, he didn't really get too much, so I would probably try to do a little bit of you know pit farming and trying to uh, you know get that fixed you know with time. But if you're someone like that uh, 88 there or something, you know, I might even elect to pop in and, and take that fast repair because that was, that was a pretty hard hit. Yeah, I mean, honestly, 88 car, you he's going to need to use a fast repair because you know, there's no way you're reattaching that front end without losing a lap.
I say all of this after having about a combined six minutes worth of damage in a uh, truck race a couple of nights ago. Campbell coming back down pit lane. I, I yeah. think he's getting off sequence here. It looks like McConey's going to take the wave around here. Looks like uh, 72 is going to do so as well. So look to those, those two guys to try and get one of their laps back. They are a couple laps down. See who's. But they're all stacked up. I think the 50 is going to. Go to the tail end as he is a lap down. Like he is the first car a lap down, probably the only car one lap down. Yeah, he is. Uh, McConey's going to be behind him two laps down along with uh, the three car. It's uh, locked and loaded once again. We're about my, halfway through this race. My question is going to be how tentative are people going to be to try to make green flag stops now because we just saw what happened. Are people going to be a little more hesitant to try to come down pit road? Yeah, it's definitely going to be one of those calls here. But we'll have a different leader lead him to the start finish line today. We got... Brandon Honeycutt down on the inside. See if he's going to try and get the uh, 42 of Kevin Menopis to stay with him here. And we are down and away. Looks like that was a pretty decent restart, but he did get out to two tenths of a second at least. So he's going to be swallowed up here in a hurry unless he can walk. I don't think he's going to have the chance to block. They're going to eat him up quick. Matter of fact, here they go. Yeah, I, I think luckily for him, it's still early. You know, we're we're approaching halfway. Later on, that's going to be a lot, you know, a lot worse. You're going to see people just jump him. But right now, you know, he's, you know, we're still, basically, we still have a whole another half of race to go right now. And he's, he's, I think he's all right. Yeah, and Jordan, you just said it. We got another half of the race to go. How fatigued are these guys already? Ooh, the two goes around in oh. front of the field. Even Hines. I think I got my answer. <laughs> He slides up, and Kirby Wainscott slides in behind him as they were trying to go back down the track. That's going to get that two loose, and he's going to go right in front of Kirby Wainscott and the 313 of Robinson here. Yeah, and Matt Mettler just missing, you know, getting tagged there by that, that car and, and getting away safely. Brian Bliss got involved there as well so and he's gonna have a little bit of front end damage yeah we want to see some front end damage here <laughs> that's more like emotional damage than front end damage 
I don't think flex tape can can uh, fix that. Yeah, at least it's warm enough that it might stick, though. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do it. <laughs> I needed the right time. Oh. Can you guys not tell it's early for us calling this race? <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. Usually we're calling races about, you know, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, and I mean, this is actually, I guess you would consider late for me now, just because, uh, you know, I, my one-year-old likes to wake me up at, you know, the crack of dawn, so. Yeah, it's still before noon for me, so. Yeah, I'm uh, just past one o'clock, so. But, you know one-year-old he wakes up when he wants you know probably been up probably about since 5 30 6 30 this morning my time so almost yeah. nap time fellas <laughs> who knows you might get that chance to get a couple of z's in during the midway part of this race if they single out <laughs> yeah, i kind of made a joke about that earlier but um yeah, the joke hasn't come to fruition yet. No, no, not at all. I mean, we're getting to the point where these guys are are going to be racing like uh, the usual distance that they usually run here when they're doing a league race at Talladega. You know, that 90, 80 to 90 lap ratio here. So, yeah. Looks like everybody came down pit lane, too, so. Looks like the 50 got the wave around, so he'll be back on the lead lap. Sounds like somebody just hit that uh, magical number. Has to take a drive through. It, it wouldn't surprise me on that. Yeah, just remember they have to serve it under green, so. <laughs> We're getting to that century mark here. See if they're going to get stacked up this time by, I would imagine. I wonder if that penalty went to the 313, because he's been involved in a lot today. No, nah, I think he he got a pretty good bit of damage there. He had that bar come right up in front of him, so. Light should go out this time by, and we'll get stacked up once again with Honeycutt, Harrison, Campbell, and Poke. Oh, look, don't look now. Rick Webb is inside the top five. Haven't called his name all night. It's nighttime somewhere. <laughs> I One think out in Japan. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. Yes, sir. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think it's five o'clock in international waters. <laughs> Looks like the three might have called it a day, too. Looks like the three's not on track anymore, so two drivers out of the 34 that took the green flag here in the uh, Racers Elite Talladega 500. You know, and that, that surprises me that so many are still, you know, on the on the lead lap here too at, at Talladega halfway through it. You know, it's that's 
kind of pretty amazing. I mean, I know they've been a little chaotic, but I mean, the fact that we have this many cars running and, you know, most of the field's still on the lead lap, it's, that's a surprising thing to see. I just got an interesting message from the 63. He pulled a Talladega Nights and lost a lap. Had to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, when you got to go, you got to go. And <laughs> I don't think I'm that committed to sim racing that I would I would pull a, a NASCAR and go in my suit. I'm the same way. Hey, Barney, wave that green flag. Let's get this party going. Down and away again, and Honeycutt gets out to that quarter of a second lead here. Lee Campbell behind him, Tyler Harrison in the high lane as they head off through turn number one. This time you know, he's, he's got a bigger lead this time. It'll be interesting to see which lane he decides to go up to. And you know that they all kind of abandoned the bottom and kind of fell back from the bottom and that top row is just gonna freight train by them. Yeah, everybody that was in the in the bottom jumped up top except for three cars. Yeah, and we're just going to probably see a lot of these guys that moved up there probably once they get clear of that front that front car dive down and try to you know have that control spot on the inside and you know because they're they're kind of back together now they're not as as split up but. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see that 45 make the dive down into into front in front of uh, the uh, 44 there. I don't think he's going to get the chance. That 13 is shoving the 44 back up to the front. Yeah, Honeycutt is not going to try and let that outside line get that run, but coming down the backstretch, they have it if they want it. I think Honeycutt's a little bit more favorable of wanting to be in that middle lane. Saves the tires and keeps the momentum up. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like with this next gen, the bottom line isn't necessarily there throughout the corners. You know, you run that bottom line throughout the back, you know, the back stretch and, and in the trioval, but. You see some of these guys going through that, you know, turn one and two and, and three and four. They're not as snug up to that line as, as you know, we used to be with that Gen 6 car and, and really hugging that line and holding that line. No, it reminds me a lot more of what you would see in the 70s and 80s with these guys running the middle to the top of the track more the way this car is. Yeah, it's not like, not like recently where they're just basically hugging that bottom line as much as they can to keep that momentum. Yeah, no, I mean, we've seen seen this top line actually really come in and, and actually really start to dominate here, you know, as we go on. You know, we saw that bottom line. Everyone was using that bottom line, you know, keeping their, their self, you know, snug and kind of running that, and everyone would try to make a move to the outside. But now it seems like everyone's kind of, opted to be in that top lane and just kind of ride out here. Yeah, Brandon Honeycutt started on the front row there and he is back into ninth place already as that outside line pretty much just freight train the inside. And just like what you said, half the field jumped down in front of Honeycutt there. Now Lee Campbell goes to the middle. You know, and once again, I know they're flip-flopped where we find that 81 and that 5 together, you know, you know the 81 in front of the 5 this time, but... You know, if they find a way to switch that around here, uh, they're going to be hard to stop. And, you know, as it looks like the 30 looks inside of the five now, kind of making that third lane. Yeah, Elliot's trying to get that middle lane working and just 
lost all momentum there as he is going the wrong yeah. way in a hurry. And just as he abandons it, the 13 looks up to, to try to help him out there. But, you know, luckily for him, he was able to kind of move himself back into that line, though. Yeah, he he had an opening, was able to slide back down behind Truth Hoke here and in front of Braxton Deweese. Like Andrew Teft is stuck in the middle with Lee Campbell on the high side. That's Greg McConey behind him. McConey needs a couple quick cautions to get back on the lead lap. Uh, <clears throat> it looks like he's just trying to kind of stay out of the way still though too, which is which is very honorable. You know, you don't typically see a lot of people when you're in official races doing that, but you know, that's what I love about special events and, and you know, league racing. You, you have a lot more respect in races like that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, could you imagine if this was official full-length Talladega race, how many cautions we'd have by now? We'd still be on, on the, the opening pace laps, in my opinion. <laughs> imagine what it's going to be like official for, like, Bristol and Phoenix. <sighs> Those are the days that I just avoid. If they're not, you know, a mile and a half or bigger, I don't even touch them anymore. Well, there's a reason why I'm up here in the booth. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> right you are, right you are. And, you know, that's that's what I love about, you know, what, finding SRM. You know, I didn't think I had it. You know, I, I, was, I was a little hesitant on it, but, you know, everyone gave me a shot, and, you know, I did my first broadcast when I did my tryout, and... Everybody stood out and or stood up and said, "Like, dude, you did it!" And you know, I, I found a real good, you know, love for for broadcasting. Hey, I've been in this deal sim racing 17 years. I'm ready to pass on some wisdom that I can, you know. It looks like the 313 is going to stay on the bottom and going to cause some havoc up here with these lead lap cars, as he is not going anywhere. Is that Dynaco sponsorship on that 23 car? Let's take a look. It sure does look like it. I'm not going to lie. I, I was about to say, who does he think he is? Chick Hicks? <laughs> uh, it's goat racing. Same color. You know, it's it's not out of the ordinary to see some of those cars, which is which is awesome. For sure. That that is one thing I do love about sim racing. You have these guys. I mean, we've we've broadcast races with 13 year olds that are up here running these league races and running lights out, and some guys that are 70 doing it. It's just amazing at how this community kind of comes together, all for the love of racing. Yeah, and and. You know, especially in, in leagues and stuff, like there's just such a respect, you know. It, it really feels like just that, you know, that night out with the guys, you know, just kind of running, you know, sim racing and, and just chilling, you know. It, it's it's a great time, and, you know, I've made a ton of friends through through iRacing. There's some people that I've even, you know, gone to races with and met up with, you know. It, it's a wonderful community. It really is, and the fact that there might be the rare chance of running against a pro. I've run against uh, seven or eight professional drivers in the past year or so, so you know I can check a lot of that off of a bucket list for myself. Yeah, we broadcast a couple leagues that have a few pros that come out and hang out, so definitely, uh, definitely something to watch, and you know. Hey, it's 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 a blast doing it too. Yeah, and you know, I ran a special event, you know, earlier this year and I have a buddy of mine who who does some spotting work and he does spotting work for uh, you know, Anthony Alfredo and you know, I happened to be in the same uh, heat races as, as Anthony Alfredo and I texted my friend and said, "Hey, tell Anthony to help me." And you know, it, it got some good laughs and you know, Anthony, you know, messaged me and was like, <laughs> "I'll do my best and you know, it's just it's cool to see just the varying different you know 
personalities throughout the sim. And then you get us weird, weird off whack jobs that end up broadcasting all of this, trying to make sense of it all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm seeing here. Uh, looks like Thomas said the next next caution we should invert the field. Uh, what do you guys think about that? No, we don't need any more cautions, no. Thomas. No. <laughs> no, dude. No, we're all set with that. I mean, we got a half an hour until actual pre-race coverage of Talladega. We don't need any more cautions. Now, early in the week, we thought we might be the only show in town as it looked like it was going to be a rain-filled race there. But uh, it's like weather has changed its mind and they might be able to get it in before the rain comes. Well, you know Mother Nature, she has her own plan and she'll do what she wants, so. Yeah, I live in Wyoming, so I definitely know about that. Mother Nature's a partier. She didn't want to rain on the uh, Talladega tailgates. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell and Tef pull out in tandem. This is the back of the lead pack, basically. Oh, see some smoke. They are starting to separate again. Boat Racing 23 still leading this thing. Yeah, and I, I'm almost wondering if this is the point where they're kind of trying to just save fuel trying to you know get as far as they can you know trying to you know just kind of limit the uh you know how long they need to be on pit road the next time you know i know they're probably going to be more towards needing to do two stops you know looking you know they were in on lap 90 ish you know so i mean they're not too far into this run but i, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys would have to make it you know two more stops just to get to the end here. Lap car down on the inside. Plays a little bit of havoc, but everybody's able to get around. Yeah, because you're looking at pit stop around 130 and then again around 170, 175. So they might be trying to shorten up one of those stops. Yeah, and I, I definitely think we'll see some different varying strategies too. You know, maybe somebody getting to that window where they could make it the rest of the way and coming down and then, you know, maybe some of those guys, you know, see that they could push that, that final, uh, that one puts that pit stop before the 170-ish pit stop, pit stop and, and try to uh, – make that a shorter run and have some fuel for for any any kind of extra extra racing that we could possibly get a little bit of bouncing back here towards the tail end of the field here because the packs have got back together once again here i was just showing you on pit lane uh tyler harrison um came down and he uh Looked like he had his engine blue, but he was able to take his fast repair and get back out on track. So not losing a ton of time. Looks like Mettler is going to slow down. Have to make his way down pit lane. Looks like he's got that uh, black flag to serve here momentarily. And they're three wide up front again. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys are maybe trying to find their people and trying to get linked up, you know, early so that when it does come time to come down pit road. Oh, as we get a crash. Looks like the 59 gets hooked into the outside wall and collects at least one other person. I saw the the, the 14 there. What was that about fuel strategy? 
out the, it's window. Out the window now. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> well, the 5 and 30 get going. The 83 slides down. Oh, the f oh, that looked like a little net code. Looked like 59 kind of slid up, but I don't yeah. think it was enough to actually touch each other. But take another, no, take, and, take and another poor, quick look here. Poor McConey just... After all the work he's been doing, he just finds himself in, in the wrong spot again. Yeah, he can't even get the lucky dog. You know, if I could just see him finish this race at this point, you know, I would be happy for that man because he has had a rough day so far. Yeah, he's he's had it really bad today. That, that, that's the other thing, okay? So, A, you're racing for money. B, it's Talladega. What do you do when you're having a crap day like that where no matter what you seem to do, you always find yourself in the middle of everything? Yeah, you kind of just got you just got to kind of breathe and just kind of let let destiny do its you know do its course at that point because obviously what you're doing is is not working in its favor. So you know, unfortunately for him, you know that's that's going to be a hard one to to bounce back from. I'm not sure if he used his fast repair early on or not, but that's going to be tough. Best answer in the book: you stay out there for pride and sponsors. 100%. I mean, I feel like for him, it's, you know, he's sitting at the blackjack table, he gets handed a 20, and he's excited as hell, and then all of a sudden the dealer flips over a 21. So Matt Mettler was coming down pit lane, served his penalty right before that caution came out. That's a, that's a, that's, now that's the lucky draw there. You know, that's the lucky hand being given. That's, yeah. that's hitting the nuts on the river right there. A hundred percent. like we've got well, it looks like only three drivers that have called it a day or as Alan would say had their fun meter peg Greg Thompson Gregory Robinson and Alan Bergen all called it hey, a day. I don't I don't think Alan's fun meter pinged until he hit that beer stand so yeah you know. I think he's having more fun sitting at that beer stand right now yeah probably having a cold one and join the broadcast So we're at lap 115 of 188, so getting closer. Yeah, and it's it's only going to get more and more chaotic the closer we get to that number. It, it's 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 going to be hard to you know kind of as as I said earlier, and I, I usually it's what I like to like to say is it's hard to ignore that primal instinct in your mind that you need to be out front you need to be you know you need to win you know it's not like you're getting anything you know points wise for this or 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 bragging rights like there's money on the line you know and it, it could be five dollars it could be 50 bucks you know it could be whatever number of money it is you still want to win it because it comes along with the pride of being the winner yeah exactly i mean money is on the line we got Oh, let's see. I think it was 125 to the winner. Yeah, and then just if you race, it looks like two randomly selected uh, 
get 50 bucks if they had 40 drivers. So not sure exactly how that all divvies out since we only had 34 take the grid, but they're still racing. It's still for pride. Yeah, it looks like McConey probably took his faster pair earlier in the race as he is still on pit lane. Yeah, and that's just, that's heartbreaking for him because he was really making a little bit of a surge come back and he was doing everything he possibly could to just find his way back into this thing and it just, it seems like, you know, the racing gods were against him today. Alan just said he's enjoying the broadcast from his riding mower. For yeah, some reason, that doesn't surprise me with Alan. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it don't. Pace car is headed down pit lane, and we're about ready to get this thing going one more time here. Dan Filippo on the button. Campbell to his outside. We'll see if Hudson's going to stay with him and give him a little shove to get going here in that 43 machine. Geico restart zone, and we are down and away. Looks like he he got that big jump too, about a quarter of a second. Looks like all the leaders keep getting it. That outside lane is hooked up though. The 23 and 43 or hey 43, but it's the 44 and the 31. Yeah, and and that played right into the the 44's hands where he was able to just oh. push himself below that line and and kind of take over that that spot. But it looks like the 12's battling back out out front. 23 lit up in front of uh, Menapiece and just kind of staying there. So you see Deweese, he, he said, I'm going out. He didn't want to stay in line there. He, he finds himself leading that outside line and I'll I'm telling you, that's the guy that I'm watching here. You know, those two cars out front, they've got a big lead. He might be able to find his way up into the front right now. They are jumping inside, outside, trying to figure out a way to go. And we were three wide. Like Deweese is staying in the high line. Guys, don't look now, but old DW and that old Tide ride is, that 50 car is starting to make some headway back up to the front. That, that is a crazy comeback drive right now. Oh, the Weiss getting a little loose there. It looks like he saw the five coming up a little bit. The five is doing everything he can to try and get back to that 81 who's out front. They're still three wide. Yeah, and, and like we said, we're getting to that, that point where everyone's just gonna start putting the foot to the floor and, you know, like the, the ARCA driver said, I'm just putting my foot to the floor and I'm not lifting till I see God or a checkered flag. So, you know, it, it seems like we're getting closer and closer to that being the case. That needs to be on a t-shirt. I swear it has to be. Oh, that's a money maker. For sure. There's still three wide. We staying up high. Got some 43 down below there. And Filippo down there as well. Looks like the 50 abandoned the 43 there, and he's going to make a little bit of headway. What's crazy is the 50 was tore up, two laps down, struggling like crazy. Now all of a sudden, late stages, here he is. Yeah, yeah and, and that essentially was what Greg McConey was working on doing. And, you know, it seems like that, that 50 there of, uh, of Schwartz decided to take all that luck from him. Now he's not going down to that yellow line and looks like the 42 of Menopies is trying to get him to go down there so he can give him a shove around the track. Ruth Hoke 
had, a, had the EOL from the last caution and is making his way back inside the top 14 right now. Yeah, it looks like this pack is staying a lot tighter. We've seen it break up earlier in the race, but looks like it's one giant pack now and nobody's lifting. Lee Campbell slides down in front of the 11 of Chris Blasey. And Andrew Teft. It just looks like that outside line is still the line you want to be in for now. They're still tightly formed up there. We got Jorgensen, Campbell, and Gatina all working that high line. Braxton DeWeese staying up there too. Look at that. Something bouncing back and forth. Yeah, and it's interesting to see these guys are desperately trying to get that third middle lane going you see the the you know lee campbell and and the uh the 11 there with him just they keep kind of popping up and and trying to make that work and you know they luckily they can kind of squeeze back in front of uh the, of the six of andrew teff there and you know keep their momentum but these guys keep pushing that middle line there yeah here comes kinsley smith in the middle 11 trying to slide up, make it a little tight. 14 does slide up in front of Kinsley Smith, working in the middle. Yeah, and, and what's great about that middle line is exactly what Kinsley Smith's doing right there is you have the chance to, you know, kind of catch that lead car off guard and kind of go to his inside and take the spot from him. Well, Kinsley worked really well to get up there, and then all of a sudden, Lee Campbell jumped up in front of him, and that line just started going backwards. Tells me they've got the wrong car at the head of the line. I don't think that 15's a good uh, lead car. Yeah, I mean, it also comes down to pushing as well. You know, if you don't have a great pusher, you know, like we've seen the 81 be most of the day, you know, you see the three of them stacked up there now. If they can keep that going, you know, oh, I think I might have saw a little bit of something. I could have been just my eyes. <laughs> I definitely, uh, definitely had, I guess, I guess I'm just a little on edge waiting for something, but um, we closer. all are. <laughs> <laughs> We're all on edge for the big one. I'll say the so, 50 slid up almost into the side of the 23 there. But yeah, if they can stay locked together, I mean, they can make that work. But if you're going to be, you know, any kind of separation, it's, it's just not going to work in your favor. Kinsley Smith trying to push the five. We have Joey Gatina towards the front in that middle lane as they are three wide, three rows. Oh, the five off of the there it goes. three. And that's that's going to be interesting because, you know, Jorgensen's two biggest helpers all day were, were the five and the 83, and they both end up in that there. Yeah, you can see coming down the back stretch here, he just gets a run. Oh, the 11 comes up. The 11 of Chris Blasey comes up. Kinsley Smith just checking. Gets spun around, and that's going to trigger the big one. Now, my thing Lee is, Campbell. Looks like 15, 15 looks like he gave uh, Gatina a whale of a shot. Maybe that loosened uh, Joey up at the same time that the 11 came up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you get to that, those uh, those corners of that car, it doesn't matter if you're going straight as can be. It's still going to get you out of whack. And you know, adding in the eleven there, it, it was just it was inevitable. Well, the good news is I think Joey still had the fast repair available, so I don't think it's going to hurt him too bad. 
I mean, for for uh, Jorgensen's sake, uh, oh, you know, I hope so. The 11 just followed the 43 up the track, though. So. Everybody's going to come down pit lane. And I have just noticed that the track temp has gone down even further. We're now seeing at 88 degrees track temp. Oh boy. Sixty-three, going to stay out, try and take that wave around. Uh, sixty-three is actually shown as the leader. Really? I'm looking at it right wow. now. Sixty-three is the leader. Why? He was he was last on pit road, lap ninety-four. Ouch. I just assumed everybody was coming down pit lane. I think he might be trying something here. Well, lap 94. He'd have to come down pit road in the next 10, 15 laps, though. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to go so far off strategy that when he does come down pit road, he doesn't have to make another stop. I mean, maybe he wants to come down pit lane all by himself. <laughs> yeah, that could be it, too. <laughs> Can't say I blame him. Craig McConey back on track. Yeah, like we've said, this is just for pride and sponsorship at this point, because that he's... He's down in the order after all his bad luck today. About 10, I'll say 10 laps down, 11 laps. Eight, uh, excuse me, he's 11 laps, yes. Correction, 11 laps down. Yeah, I thought he was still in the teens here. Yeah, I just had to let scoring update briefly. <laughs> and it looks like you were right. The 63 wanted to come down pit road with less cars as possible. Stack him here. About 60 laps to go. So now, if you're the 81 of Jorgensen, you're going to have to almost, almost find uh, new helpers. Well, he's got the 44 on his outside, and they've been kind of working together off and on this race as well, but. I wouldn't rule out that five car coming back up and trying to help him. I mean, it looks like he's got the damage fixed. I wouldn't be surprised to see him up there before long. I still can't believe we only have three guys that have called it a night for a day so and afternoon. Tell me about it. Uh, this is, I'm, it's going to come to a point where we're going to see the one wreck that will knock out half the field, and we'll see the DNF list grow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's it's only inevitable for that to happen. The wick is getting shorter, and that fire is getting brighter. Hey, Barney, up in the flag stand. You got that green flag ready for me? Good, do me a favor, wave it.
Waits clear to the end of the restart zone. Doesn't quite get the jump he had before, but if he slides up or lets the four, they have 44 slides down in front of him, in front of the eight there, and away they go. Yeah, it looked like he waited a little bit longer than usual. I, I saw him take off about midway point of the box before. This time he waited until he's almost out of it. Yeah, and I, I almost wonder if he's trying to guesstimate like what people, other people are anticipating him to do so that he can try to keep himself from getting that far out and kind of just feeling, you know, building, you know, stacking his notes like you said earlier. Yeah, because I think he's going to be up there to the point. If we do get that late caution, he's up front. He's going to want to go back to that notebook and figure out what worked best. And just look at the push that he's getting here from the 44. Yeah, I, I don't want to say his name. I've said his number quite a few times tonight. He's found himself up there in those top three cars. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give him that jinx, but found his way up to the front. And, you know, I'm still that's that's still my driver that I'm pulling for and I, that I'm with right now. I, he's definitely making a, a good headway. And I can see you know exactly who I'm talking about because you're on his car right now. I mean, you're not wrong. He has found his way up there. He's kept the car relatively clean this race. Yeah, and, and from what I've been seeing from a, a family member of his, it, he knows how to hold that wheel steady. And he's definitely going to find a, find a way, I think, around these cars, you know, given the chance. This is the first place seven. We're pretty much single filed here. Leading the outside is Matt Mettler. Mettler came down, had to serve a penalty, but is leading that outside lane as looks like the 43 pulls out and is trying to get that outside line moving here. Look who's high. Yeah, he's, he's definitely looking at, to find his way back up to his uh, his partner in the 81. So, you know, those those two cars, they, they've been the, the class of the field all night or day. <laughs> Why does it not surprise me to see him working that top shelf? I think he's trying to get somebody to go with him. And if somebody goes with him, it could be a dangerous option here as he has moved up to 12th and I believe he restarted looks, outside the top 20 and it looks like Matt Mettler grabbed the fence a little bit there so that's going to jumble some stuff up and that only help the five oh as we get oh. contact we stay green for now I think we're going to stay green yeah wow That all started with Mettler grabbing the wall, and then it just cycled back from there, people trying to get around him. That looks like, looks like Mettler hit that fence and then called it a day. Looks like Kinsley Smith as well. Trying to get a view of it here, but... I saw, I think it was if we somebody, can. I think it was the 88 got the fence too. And that's what really triggered it up front. Oh, the 313. Oh. Yeah, the yeah. 12 got involved, but then I saw a couple of cars up further up that got involved too. Yeah, it looked like the 87 might have pinched somebody in the wall and just stacked everybody up. Or I think I said 87, I'm at 88. Uh, kind of stacked everyone up and it just was a a, um, a little bit of a, an accordion effect there. Yeah, it definitely looked like it and it looked like Mettler and Kinsley Smith both hit that instant limit so they are done for the night on that.
131. But that definitely uh, jumbled the field here. And the five is lucky enough to stay out of it as he was almost collected. All of this, and we still have one more pit stop left. So that definitely uh, changed the flow of the field here. Definitely broke the pack up because now you'll see these guys basically want to stay single file probably till after they get done their pit stop and then we'll see the race come out of this. Yeah, and I mean, out of these guys, I mean, you just have the top 10 right here just running away and that's going to work out for those guys because it's a lot less of a, a hassle to try to get past, you know, nine cars than it is, you know, 29 cars. So uh, these guys end up, you know, running away and getting a good gap and, and end up, you know, uh, side by side and, and two wide and three wide. I mean, it's a lot less cars to try to get by at one time. Yeah, if you're this lead pack, you're going to want to hit basically all, as soon as you feel comfortable with the one green green white checker finish that we might have. You're going to you're going to want to probably come down um, as soon as possible. You don't want the uh, second pack kind of short pitting and able to basically get a jump on you. Yeah, I think that window would probably be lap 145, 150. I think Braxton needs to fire his painter though Thomas Thomas in the chat said that he loves the scheme of the of the uh, 25 8 here but <laughs> got that interstate Ford logo going on there that's a gorgeous car though I'm in love with that car Just pretty much staying single file. Go back to the second group. The second group moved down to the bottom line and is staying pretty much single file. And then you go back almost 11 seconds back to this next you know, three and four car group here. You know, and I see McConey made his way back out. And McConey's working lap 127, so. He makes it to the end. He'll, he'll at least pass a few more drivers here. Yeah, and I I feel like that's in in uh, you know needs to be rewarded in some kind of cash compensation. Simply if he can just get to the finish, because he has not had an easy day at all whatsoever. making their way past some lap traffic here. Yeah, and it was our one of our former leaders in the 12 car and, you know, another another competitor that's been running up front, you know, most of the race, uh, Truth Hoke, you know, that they were involved in a little bit of that, you know, get together and, you know, it's it's crazy how fast things can change at a, at a track this large. Yeah, and as you say that, you got like nine cars on this high line. Got a few more joining in, but then you have this bottom line with uh, Kirby Wainscott down here. He has a lap lapper in front of him, but they're still working pretty well here. Yeah, and as long as they can stay nose to tail, unlike, you know, you see those gaps in front of the yeah, in that top line, as long as these guys can stay, you know, 
nose to tail as tightly as possible as we see the 30 dive down into that line. He sees the momentum they have. And that's only gonna take momentum away from the top line. <laughs> they basically said they didn't want him in that party though. Let's say everybody jumped to the middle. They're three wide now. What was it I said about the top 10 cars driving away? Yeah. I... How many times have I cursed this race? <laughs> hey, man, I don't think we're done whatsoever. That's why I'm keeping a certain driver's name out of my mouth. Because <laughs> I want to see him win. <laughs> Let's say Gatina is back up inside the top 10. He's working not his way up. No, I'm not surprised. That car has been lightning fast all day. Yeah, and, and at this point, it's it's a bigger game of survival than it was but you know before because you know we're coming down to crunch time. You're gonna get to that point where you know may you may see some of these guys dive off for pit road earlier. And then you may see some of these guys kind of push it till that last little bit of, you know, 15, 20 laps to go before pitting. So, I mean, we're going to see a bunch of varying different strategies, I think. And it's going to it's definitely going to be exciting. And, uh, you know, the last time we had green flag pit stops, we had, you know, a major incident. So I'd be on the lookout for just about anything right now. And, and as, you say <laughs> as, that, I say that, as you were saying, sir. Oh yeah, you talk about the curses, you know. I it just keeps happening. <laughs> but I mean, it's not wrong. I said be prepared for just about anything. And there it is. Yep, anything tended to happen. Well, this will put things in an interesting window because. This is just barely on the outside of the fuel window. Front here. Up to 64. Eleven. Ooh, gets yeah, this. It looks like the eleven pushing 60. that left left that left rear uh that left rear of the bumper and kind of just got him squirrely and sent him around you know and, and give and take like that that's out of the window you know it, it's it's all take at this point you got to get yourself in a position where you want to be and unfortunately you know he took a little bit too much there and and you know sent him around And like I said, varying strategies. We see Kirby Wayne Scott stay out on on the, on the track. I wonder if that was just by design, or you know, or or what. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if the pit window is the forty to forty-two, they close. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if anybody else has to make a pit stop, or if they're going to try and save a little bit of fuel. Well, yeah, it's just it's interesting because you know he was down lap 126. So I mean he's he's about 20 laps into the run, and you know everybody else is coming down now. So even if they have to pit, he's got to hope that they do a little bit of a short pit, because um, if not, he's going to be pitting alone. Yeah, that's going to be tough because if he doesn't come down now, he's looking at coming in in about 15 laps. And while it might set him up for the green-white checkered finish, if need be, he'll be the only one down, and that's going to put him behind the eight ball. Now, yeah, might... but, I mean, even if these guys, you know, stretch it out to, you know, the edge of that fuel run, I mean, if they can't make it, 
you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect these guys to come down until probably around 170. That way, you know, fuel is out your out of your mind, and you know, tires aren't really a an issue here. So, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't think anybody would be taking tires whatsoever, unless unless we get another caution within that. You know, I I wouldn't see anybody really taking any tires anymore. No, so I think does, they're done taking tires. It does look tires. like I think Kirby might be coming down here now. Yeah, I think he's trying to get that extra lap of fuel to be on the safe side. I mean, it is two to one, two and a half to one, yellow to green here. So, I mean, you might see people try to stretch it, but at the same token, is it going to be worth the stretch? Yeah, I mean, he could he could run, you know, three-quarter throttle behind somebody for a couple of laps, and then once he finds himself in a, in a comfortable position, he could easily just, you know, basically just be on go and, and not have to worry about anything. Well, about 10 cars are likely to come down and get that splash and go. Yeah, and that, that doesn't surprise me. You know, I, I think some of these guys up here in the front, especially whoever's leading the field, is going to have a, a rough time saving any fuel. And, you know, I think we're going to get going green around, you know, 147, 146, 148. And that, that would put them within the window. But it's going to be a stretch for the guy leading the run because he's going to burn fuel quicker. Well, we've been racing here at the Teledega 500 for two and a half hours now. Yeah, and that, that's a long time to keep, you know, concentration, you know. I, I mean, it's it's hard enough just watching, you know, a real race in, 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 you know, real world and pay attention every single lap. But to be in it and pay attention fully with the anxiety and, and uh, the, the physical exertion, whether it's a real car or not, some of these wheels are, are high force feedbacks, you know, wheels and, you know, it, 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 you drive it. You know, you may not feel the G-forces and you may not feel the actual effects of a real car, but you're still feeling it. Your arms are up, you know, on the wheel and th that's a fatigue. So, you know, these guys are going to have to be mentally strong and physically strong to just finish out this last 43, 44 laps. Yeah, pace car is in. Ferguson with the button. Campbell to his outside. Braxton DeWeese back in third place here as they get ready to go to that Geico restart zone. Looks like Jorgensen learned something as he was way late in the box, almost after the green flag wave. Yeah, and, and DeWeese is you know, able to kind of stick with him there and not really let him get away. And, and that, I think that's what Jorgensen's trying to, you know, get in his head that, you know, he can't get that big run out because once we get down to later in these runs and if we do have a green-white checker, he's just going to be pushed aside. There's going to be no take, you know, no giving, and ta it's all going to be take. It's, it, there's not going to be any space given whatsoever. No, and when that happens... Well, we'll see more of us back up, that's for sure. You can just see how much of a push Braxton is giving that WeatherTech 81 machine. And that outside line is working pretty well, though. Oh, whoa, what a squeeze. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, Jorgensen in goes. and out. We stay green, though. Yeah, but that 81 car is killed. Yeah, and that's that's very unfortunate because he is without a doubt one of the strongest strongest racers here tonight, today, whatever it may be, and that's gonna be that's gonna be detrimental because he's he's gonna be so far behind. He has got to be fuming under that helmet right now. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a good time to uh, have a driver interview here. No, far from it. Let's see. Got a 40, oh. You know, Ooh, that, who was that outside of him? 
it looked like the 64 of uh, Britain. It looked like he just thought he had a, a space for some reason, and I think he was just playing follow the car in front of him, and when he saw the 43 dive down, I, he, I, I purely believe he thought he had that space. We'll talk about a late, late race shakeup here. I'm surprised. Well, actually, I'm not surprised the 81 didn't come down pit road. He may be saving that fast repair for another caution. I'll tell you what that did was split this pack up yet again. A top eight, it looks like, out here running. And you know what a pack that small? They, I mean, one, they could definitely get tracked down by, you know, whatever is building behind them, but also with a pack that small, any one of those top eight cars could, you know, come across that finish line as a winner. And they definitely are working well together here. Yeah, and Deweese is able to just kind of stick right on that bumper, kind of like, you know, Jorgensen was doing all, all race long. Just getting on that bumper, finding your way to get a little bit of air to your nose to kind of keep yourself cool, and then just go right back to, you know, shoving the guy in front of you. Hudson leading the race. If you're in this lead pack, you just want to kind of roll through here, you know, kind of save a little bit of fuel, work your way around and just hope this thing goes green for the next, you know, 38 laps. Back at the next pack here. Truth, Hope, yeah, Teft, just, Hill. Yeah, and that, that pack is a little bit smaller, but they do look a little bit more organized. A little bit more nose to tail than that front pack you know they they do seem to be getting it a little bit tighter you know now that I, I you know now that i'm talking about it but you know the smaller pack you know i think if they can stay as tightly as possible longer than that front pack i don't see why they can't slowly you know reel these guys in over the next 30 or so laps You can see them slowly rolling in here. Yeah, they, they definitely gained roughly about two to three tenths, you know, on this lead pack within just a lap or so. So, you know, they're definitely a little bit more aligned and definitely, you know, working their way through. They are coming up on some lead um, lap car traffic here. Let's see. It should be fine as they've been running that low line versus when uh, when the 81 was running. Yeah, and, and that, 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 that 72 car out there, wow, I did not realize how close those guys have gotten. They're already within one and a half seconds as opposed to the two, you know, 2.1, 2.2 that they were just a lap ago. But that 72, I, I was gonna say, could easily kind of move in line and maybe help this line, but those uh those that little five car pack is really shown to be strong here as they start to overtake that last car. Yeah, mm -hmm. that first that first pack broke up too much. That's why these five cars were able to track them down. As we see Tef, it kind of looks like he was looking to make it three wide for some reason, but thinks better of it. Tef was trying to either get to the bottom or go up high as trying to just get around the truth, hopefully. Yeah, and I feel like a couple of those cars, you know, kind of bailed on them. You know, I mean, there's still majority of that small pack. They kind of bailed on them when they had that run. I think if they would have stayed tucked together, that whole outside line could have made it all the way up to, you know, DeWeese and Hudson. You know, they're not really faulting, you know, faltering at all here at all, you know, as they make a run up, but you know, with the 44 jumping up there, you know, that's gonna reel those front three back. 
Yeah, the 44 jumped up in front of the 59. And Truth Hope, Truth Hope almost looks like he was going to force it three wide on the high side as he had a massive run there. But they get to the front. We'll see if the 44 is going to stay in the high line or if he's going to slide down in front of the 43 here. Yeah, and that 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 was a, a classic representation of how important it is to stay in a full, cohesive, tight line. Because, you know, they had more cars. They had more, you know, arrow, you know, going on. But the fact that they kept splitting up and having so many gaps between them, they weren't able to keep that, that distance on that second pack. So, you know, those five cars, six cars, whatever it was, you know, staying as nose to tail as they were, were able to just kind of slowly reel them in until it just started, you know, that gap started shrinking intensely. 44 slides down in front of the 43 there of Joe Hudson. Truth Hope going to lead that outside line once again. Hundred and fifty six laps and they are still battling like crazy up here on the front row. Yeah, and it's it's only gonna ramp up and you know I think for the forty threes case there, getting those cars in front of him I think are gonna help him out. Because he was running out front for most of that time there and you know, he definitely was burning up more fuel than everybody else, so now that he gets to run behind somebody and kind of run his three-quarter half throttle, he can kind of go into a little bit more conservative, a little bit more of a fuel save mode and, and just try to stretch this thing out. Yeah, you got to think that that's, that's the mindset you're going to be in is you, you want to save at least a little bit of fuel here just in case, you know, it does go green the whole way just to try and buy yourself, you know, an extra couple laps maybe. Yeah, and, and if it does happen to, you know, go to a green-white checkered or something, you are you want to save yourself a little bit so that you don't have to pit and get fuel there, you know. You can just stay out on the track and have wonderful track position to where you can just, you know, go balls to the wall and just make a run for the win. There goes the 23 down to the inside. Charles Van Dijk. Another lap car coming up as well. Yeah, that, that's that's the, the part that always scares the crap out of me is when you have that too wide, you come up on a lap car. It just, <laughs> I always get that little bit of like a, a stiffness in my arms where I'm like, I don't want to move. I think we all get that. Don't look now, but I think that second pack is starting to catch these guys. I think they're starting to slowly reel in everybody here. Yeah, and that's that's only going to you know create more and more drama for for this this race. You know, we're adding more cars into the mix and. If we can make it the next 30 laps with a, without a caution, I, I will be surprised. I'd almost put money that we'd have two more. I think we got at least one more in the bank for this one. Yeah, I mean you're just putting too many, hen, you know, you know, roosters in the in the hen house, and it, it's it's not going to go well. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm going to leave it alone. I mean, I had to change up what I was going to say at first, too, so. I know exactly where you were going. But yeah, I mean, you're just, you're, you're adding more and more to the, to the mix. And, you know, when you have so many drivers going for the win, as we see some people dive off for the, for pit. So yeah, they definitely were, I guess, a little bit short. 
I'll take the shot. Strategy. You know, you see Hudson, DeWeese, Campbell, and and Higman. You know, all there just dive down, and and you know they're gonna get they're gonna get fueled up, and hopefully if they can stay in a nice cohesive line like you know that second pack before was, they won't have any problem. You know, running down this pack and you know uh, putting you know putting themselves in a really good position. Why do I get the sneaky suspicion we're going to see a lot more cars come down pit road here? Yeah, I mean they forced the hand, so whether it's now or the or the lap after, they're they're going to have to really think about what they want to do here. And that's it's kind of like it's kind of like playing chess when you come to these kind of you know restrictor plate races. You know, you think you have your plan, you know what you're going to do, but then you see that large group you know do something completely different, and it kind of it kind of messes with your mind a little bit, and you know makes you kind of wonder like, oh maybe maybe I should come down, and then you end up bringing a, a whole pack with you, and you know it, it's a game of chess. It's definitely going to be interesting to see um, if they can, if they're, if these guys are going to try and make it on this fuel run, it might be okay. But Andrew Teff last pitted on lap 144, so 44 laps. It's going to be tight. Yeah, and and someone like uh, like Hoke out there running in the point, you know, you know he's he's full throttle. He has no ability to lift whatsoever because if he lifts in the slightest, people are just going to go around. They're going to just find their way around him, and, and, and he's going to end up behind them, which in my case doesn't sound like a bad thing at all. No, I think if I was playing strategy, I would have would have uh, given up the lead to be, you know, towards the tail end of this pack so you can do that half throttle, three-quarter throttle and save a little bit of fuel here. So the group that came down is 35 seconds behind the leader right now. Yeah, and if these guys end up you know, getting closer to that fuel line and realizing that they can't make it, that's that's going to be, you know, detrimental to them because that, that pack, as long as they can keep making time, they're just going to come by and they may even put the same kind of gap on that pack that comes down later. So we see Greg McConey go down another lap. You know, I'm happy that he's still out there running, you know. After the day he's had, just finishing is, is enough of a win for him. Oh, for sure. He'll get a top 30 finish. <clears throat> right now he's running 29th. Oof. You know, we see that, that gap down to roughly around 32 seconds now for that second group. So making a little bit of headway, about three seconds since we last spoke about it. So, you know, they're definitely making time. If it's, if it's enough, I'm not sure, but if these guys up front have to make that stop, I think they're gonna get run over by that second group. Oh, it'll easily be enough time because this, this group is barely formed up as it is and those guys are running tight back there. I think it's about a 35 second gap from uh, pits uh, from one end of pit road to the other. So it wouldn't surprise me to see these guys get run over later on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're on the same we're on the same thought process with that. The 30th. The 30 of Connor Elliott is not having anything to do with that 72. 
Yeah, it sounded I, I barely can pick up what he's saying, but it sounds like he ain't happy at all with that Bass Pro Shop car. Yeah, and I mean, at 72, he's he's a few laps down, so he probably wants him out of the way because, you know, it's kind of halting his ability to, you know, get to those guys in front of him. And, you know, nothing against the 72 whatsoever, but I, I don't want to be in that mix. I don't want to be in between, you know, those two leader two lead cars and then the cars trying to run for position with them i don't want to be anywhere near that i want to be pretty much where maconey is you know i'm still i'm still stuck you know to the group but i'm out of the group like i'm not in the way of anybody they can do what they need to do i'm just tagging along so that i don't continue to get run over and i hate to say it, there's going to come a point where that 30 is going to be done with this 72 and probably going to ship them yeah and <laughs> It, it's in his hope he's hoping he can just move him out of the way and get him a little squirrely but you know it's not it's not a position i'd like to be in oh i'd hate to be in this position right now to be honest Tony gonna help out the 11 here. Yeah, and now we see that 72 gets shuffled out there, if 30 able to get on by, and then 63 following suit on the inside. And the gap is under 29 seconds now. Yeah, so they're definitely making time. They're definitely pulling this group of, group uh, group back, you know, reeling them in. But I just I want I want to know. I I don't know if these guys have the fuel to make it. You know. Well, if my calculation is correct. It's just outside the window for these this group of cars. Yeah, and especially for someone who, you know, like Truth Hope, who's been out front this entire time, he's a lap sooner than these guys, so he didn't come down and get that last little splash. So he's he's a lap behind what these guys are, you know, holding. Plus, you know, running out front like that, he's burning and burning that fuel. I hate to sound like a broken record, but you know, he, he's just continuing to burn the maximum amount of fuel because he's, bought, he, he's, he's the one that's cutting through the air. He's pushing the air over all these other guys so that they can, you know, run at their half to, half to three-quarter throttle and save fuel. So if they can make it, I would say that those cars behind Hoke can make it, but I do not see Hoke making it at all. A sim race at Talladega coming down to fuel mile, which you would have thought. And honestly, it's 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 a great thing. I, I don't know why it's so appealing to me, but it's strategy. I just I like the chess match. And, you know, these guys back here, you know, that pitted, I think right now they're in a little bit better of a position. Well, they definitely have to feel comfortable and confident that they made the right call here. <clears throat> we also have a group in front of them that is probably going to have to pit that's in between and that has some of the faster drivers as well we got Jorgerson back here Roy Thomas also up here I mean all these guys trying to make their way back to the front but they all pitted on lap 143 as well yeah you're looking at guys like Honeycutt Gatina Harrison all these guys they definitely going to have to stop at some point because if they're on the same strategy as the top five, forget about it. Yeah, so, I mean, we could be looking at, you know, right now, possibly Glenn Campbell, Joe Hudson, and, and Braxton DeWeese being, you know, the front three, you know, control cars in, in this situation. So, I mean, it's just going to be uh, come down to just kind of us just waiting to see because uh, it's truly, you know, we don't have 
the onboard stuff that they do. We can't see their fuel mileage, so we don't really know. You know, we're going off calculations, but, you know, I'm not that great at math. So, I mean, <laughs> I could be off a little bit, but I just don't see why the, why, how these guys can make it and why they haven't tried to stop sooner. Looks like the 72 has fallen off the pace of the leaders. Looks like he came down pit lane 166, so. Seventeen to go. Yeah, and you see Teft kind of push him out there a little bit too. Uh, they uh, they definitely aren't really trying to save much at all, and they're not quite as as formed up. I mean, they haven't lost a ton of time to the cars behind them. You know, Glenn Campbell sitting around 26 seconds behind, but you know, I almost wonder if they're just pushing it and you know maybe trying to keep a gap to where if they do have to come down and get that quick splash that it's a quick enough splash they can, you know, kind of still cycle out right behind them or just in front of them. I think it would end up being behind them because I still think it's about right around 30, 35 seconds to go up and down pit road. So I think it'd still be right behind them. Yeah, and I mean, I'm with you there too, but I, I, I'm thinking a little bit optimistic for these guys, but it's it's hard to do. Their only saving grace at this point would be a caution. Yeah, I, that's that's where I'm at. They're just hoping that some people get into each other, and you know, then they're 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 still gonna, I think, end up behind those guys that that already pitted because those other guys aren't gonna have to pit for anything. But you know, I I think they'll just be on. I mean, possibly fresher tires if they feel they need them. I don't really see the reason of needing them, but I think they'll be a little bit less uh, less anxious if they get that caution. Yeah, they're definitely trying to uh figure out what they want to do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if here in the next, I'd say about two laps is where I would give it if we see a bunch of these people come down. Yeah, I think if we see a, <clears throat> if we do see a caution, it's going to open that door right back up for that 81 and 5 to get back together and start working their way to the front. They are, they did find each other right now, but they've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, and that's the last last two people I'd want to see together again because, I mean, especially for those two groups, you know, you know, the group that pitted and the group that's out front leading right now, those two together, I mean, they're going to they're gonna just push and make their own lanes. They're not really going to care. Because, I mean, one, they're definitely a little hot-headed because after after everything that's happened to them, um, they, uh, they're they definitely a little angry. They're definitely going to be out of giving, and they're going to be all take. Gap yeah, back to the the second group is 13 and a half seconds. The gap back to the group that can make it on fuel is 23, almost 24 seconds. So, and what uh, Shane was saying was exactly right. The fastest pit stop we've seen is 
31.08 as far as pit lane time. So still going to lose lose time and that lead pack or the this pack here is going to be at full throttle so they're going to lose at least half a lap yeah and it's it's going to be it's they've definitely got to be waiting for a function yeah they want this the second group to get tired of dealing with each other and send one of the guys around and they almost got it there as a 50 and 13 make a little contact yeah but even then you know you're putting yourself well behind you know if you're mainly this second pack uh, you're putting yourself behind a ton of cars to you know risk staying out this far you know if if I was them, I would possibly, if you're waiting on that caution, just come down, get your get your fuel, and and you know, kind of cut your losses. Because right now, at this point, you're not you're not getting anything. You're not really you're not really gaining a whole ton, and you're kind of just going to be the, those cars in the middle of those two packs. Brian Bliss leading this second pack here. Looks like Truth Hoke and Andrew Teft are beginning to pull away a little bit here. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually a little surprised to see them, you know, make it as far as they have already. Nine laps to go. Everybody in that third group is hoping that it stays green because they're the only ones that can make it on fuel here. So it's going to be a tight, tight little window. Yeah, it's definitely, I, I definitely think that there's, oh, as they come... Uh, Truth Hoke is the only one that comes down. I mean, there's a. Uh, it's like Greg McConey comes with him, but I was saying, I don't think, you know, Hoke could have made it, and I he waited till the last possible second to come down. Yeah, luckily for him, Andrew Teft kind of slowed down a little bit to let him get down. Last couple times around, he was, uh, he was right on that rear bumper of the 59 machine. Yeah, and it looks like Robert Hill also came out or came down. I think I believe he was the car that was leading that second pack for quite a while. So he definitely also had a little bit of a fuel burn that he uh, wishes he could have avoided. And here they come. Here they come. Andrew Tef down and the 30 oh, gets into the back oh, 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 oh. of the 11. Wow. We see some of that second group coming down now, too, as well. Now we're going to slowly see that that group start to you know, make some headway. You know, uh, Joe Hudson and, and Deweese, they're up to seventh and eighth right now, just just behind this little bit of the second pack that's still still left. Looks like six cars are basically on the same pit strategy. One. 43, 144, Here you know comes. they're all going to have to come down. Oh, not the whole group. I thought the whole group was coming. Uh, it looked like it, but it definitely did. <laughs> I think Man, the 50 got deked on the pit road, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. These guys have me on edge. I, I'm, I'm a little bit jumpy. Normally, I'm jumpy waiting for the big one, but I'm sitting here jumpy waiting for, uh, for pit stops. Like, what is going on?
Yeah, so Campbell Bliss, Roy Thomas, Katina, and Harrison all look like they're going to have to come down pit lane unless they know something that we don't. Yeah, and I mean, even if they even if they can make it, which I, I really don't know if they can, they're still only three seconds, you know, ahead of that that group that pit. And we just saw them in that last shot. Now you can see them coming in. Yeah, and, and you know, at this stage in the race where there's five to go, they're they're not going to just tag on to the back of this field. They're going to push that outside line and try to get through these guys. Yeah, they are closing in a hurry. They can stay yeah. together. I mean, they really yeah, don't have under, anything to to worry about, though. I mean, no, they're they're under they're under two seconds, almost under a second and a half already. And I'm pretty sure all these drivers are going to have to pit. It's going to be close I mean, if they don't. Yeah, uh, and it looks like here comes a couple more. Actually, no, just one, uh, two. Wow, I t they are deking me out up here in the booth. To the high line goes that second line. Yeah, that second, second pack, that second group said, uh, it's time to go. And they're going to push it three wide. I told you, they're not going to just sit back behind these guys. They're, they're going to fly by them, and they're just going to push it. Yeah, they really don't have anything to worry about, as all the rest of those drivers are going to have to come to pit lane. I mean, if everybody else is coming to pit lane that pitted that time, they're going to have to make, they're going to have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's no way that they can make it. I mean, they were just hoping on a wing and a prayer that a caution came out. Yeah, and now that that uh, was it, Troy Thomas. He dove down in the pit road, but he's going to be all by himself now. Higman jumps up to the outside line to to get. Or not Higman, uh, Deweese jumps in front of Higman to, to take that point spot. Like the 43 got shuffled back. Yeah, Deweese saw a chance to take a run and he he took it. He did not want to, to let that go. Three laps to go, Braxton Deweese to the point. Pulling a little bit of draft on those cars in front of him, trying to keep himself in front of this 60. This 60 looks like he is hungry. And they kind of put a, a little bit of a gap between them and the other uh, the other people that were with them. This is exactly what they need. Yeah, it looks like, uh, uh, I'm trying to see, looks like the... Uh, Two and 83 are between and 83, between yeah, are, are in between them. Which for them, I mean, that's that's a wonderful thing for them to see because right now it's just a three-car race as they get out, the 83 at least gets out of the way. Yeah, the 83 said, no, nah, I'll let you guys race for it. Jumps to the back of that pack. So Deweese is going to come around, head through the tri-oval. Flagman's going to have that white flag in the air. Final lap of the Talladega 500 is underway. Braxton DeWeese with the lead. And you, know, you wonder, when is when is Higman going to think about making his move? He's going to have to back off a little bit. And, you know, when with backing off, he's going to have to watch that 44 car right behind him because he could leave him out to dry too. I'm going to say the 44 and 23 are the drivers you're going to have to watch out for. And the five, Joey Gatina, has not pitted. He must have been saving gas this entire time. I don't think we're done yet. Oh, what a save by Joey. The 44 jumps out of line a little bit, but here comes the 60 making a little bit of a push. DeWeese jumps to the inside, and he's going to win the race. I told you guys that was the man to watch, and oh my gosh, it's I'm over here. I'm like, it's like I'm watching Chase Elliott on a Sunday afternoon. I'm hyped. 
What a job. Dude. Joey Gatina didn't pit and made it inside the top five. Yeah, I don't That's know impressive. How, in, how on God's green earth he made it. 44 laps. He was I, drafting. He was drafting the entire time. But that eight car, what a job. I hate to say it, guys. But I told you so. You don't hate to say it. Shut up. I don't hate to say <laughs> it. I love saying it. <laughs> I need to find out if they make a die cast of this. I'd like to have it. <laughs> oh, brother. But now nah, he gets the he gets the cash. He gets the win and he gets to burn it down right here on the start finish line for all these fans that are watching. And it's good. It's got to feel great. I mean, especially at a place like Talladega or, or, you know, really any super speedway. It's so hard to win. You know, that's why they say it's anybody's race. And, you know, I, I don't know what it was that stuck out to me, but I just I had a feeling with how he was able to, you know, hold his line so still and he just seemed calm. And, and you know, it, it just it's great to see him pull off this win. Yeah, he drove his tail off here at the end of it. He kept that car clean the majority of this race, and he was there when it counted most. All right, let's see if we can get some drivers up here in the booth. Oh, that boy knows how to celebrate, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, <laughs> couldn't be a prettier car in, in victory lane. No, that, that gives me serious 60s throwback vibes. Oh, 100%, especially with that, that number font and everything. I mean, it's great for him, you know. Uh, you know, this is a real-world sponsor from him for, from what I've been seeing uh, through the comments here. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll be pleased to have him uh, winning this race. Oh, I know how it goes. I've I've got a couple of those myself, and anytime we put it in victory lane, they couldn't be any happier. So I know these boys at Interstate Ford will be happy for sure. Yeah, definitely. Gonna try and get drivers up here in the booth, but I can't move them. I'll let them move around here real quick. Yeah, sounds like they're still talking about uh, breaking down this race a little bit. <laughs> See if we can get these drivers up in here. I'm telling you right now, if this is how my first race is going to go in this booth, I can't wait to see the rest of them. While we're doing that, let's see if we can take a replay here. 83 gave the sh bad shove to the five. I still don't know how Joey saved that car. If anybody jumps up here so we can get them down here. Yeah, working on it right now, trying to get <laughs> some of these guys together. There they go. Okay. All right. Yep. We'll get third place up here in the booth for you. Jordan, I believe you're with uh, John there. 
Yep, John Higman. It's uh, Jordan, uh, Shane, and Mike up in the the booth. You got a copy? I got you. So, I mean, you you gave it all there at the end. You know, you were all over the back of Deweese there. And, you know, do you think there was anything you could have done, you know, to maybe get a little bit better of a run or, you know, make the pass for the lead there? I mean, I was watching my mayor probably most of the time, and I was waiting for Glenn to get a run on me. And I saw those other guys coming, and I pulled out, and then, then Braxton moved up a little, and I didn't want to, like, hook him or something. And, uh, I kind of moved myself out of position and ended up third. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you guys definitely had the the right idea there with that, you know, early pit stop and not trying to stretch it out. You know, did you guys just kind of sit there and talk about that throughout the the run there, or you know, how did that that transpire? Um, we basically figured out how much gas we needed, and uh, under that caution, we were talking about it, and then we kind of were like, yeah, okay, let's pit now. And uh, that's, that's basically how it happened. Yeah, well, I mean, it definitely worked out for you guys a lot better than it did the rest of the field. You know, you guys were the only ones that came down. And you know, it, it ended up being the winning strategy. You know, you guys stayed green for that entire last run. And, you know, you guys uh, put on a hell of a show. So uh, congratulations on third place. Uh, before we let you go, is there anybody you want to shout out? Uh, I'd like to thank the, my mom and dad, Sim uh, 500. Uh, Andrew for putting this thing on, um, you guys for uh, broadcasting the race, and uh, God for letting all of us do this. Well, we appreciate you, and you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, you too. All right. Shane, you're with uh, Glenn there. Yeah, there's a voice you ain't heard in a dog's day. Glenn, it's Shane, Mike, and uh, Jordan up in the booth. You got a copy? I got you, guys. Yeah, it's been a bit, right? P2 finish. Did you guys have anything for that eight car at the end, or was he just that strong? We were just running as a team, man. It was his strategy to got us in that spot, but I was talking to, talking to him. I said, man, if I could have pushed John or went by, I would have done it. We were just going to run to the last lap and du duke it out. And, and it's very difficult uh, to pass somebody alone, so... Yeah, no, we were all just trying as a team. We just, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good strategy on it was his strategy that got us where we're at. Well, that strategy got you guys a P2 finish behind him. Anybody you want to thank before we uh, get you out of here? Absolutely. You know, I, I appreciate Sim 500 putting up on their show every week. You know, you guys already know all about that. I'm not going to be uh, productive, but uh, yeah, Sim 500, Joey, for mentioning this to me. And um, whatever, uh, I would say whatever the winnings are, I just want to donate it back to the charity for the race, okay? Hey, we appreciate you doing that, man. It's great to talk with you, and uh, we'll see you in another one of these, huh? Yep, I'll, I'll do it again. It was fun. Actually, it was really fun. I enjoyed I have not done a full 108 laps of Talladega before, and uh, it was actually really, really fun. So there's a lot of different strategy going on when the races are longer. Thanks for you guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to go back and watch, uh, watch the race. You enjoy that, man. We'll talk with you later. Yep, thank you. All right, Braxton, Mike, up in, Mike, Shane, and Jordan up in the booth, man. How's it going? It's going great here, sitting on uh, the start finish line, just ready to go celebrate. Definitely, you uh, you seem to be able to basically run wherever you wanted to. Um, how was it racing out there at Talladega with these three wide runs that you were able to get? Uh, it was really fun, you know, here at Talladega with it being wider at. Uh, it makes it, you know, more of a chance of running three wide uh, at ease than at Daytona. So, um, you know, being able to go through the middle or go to the outside and make moves, you know, it makes it a lot easier. And, uh, you know, I, would, I was just trying to focus on where the runs were and um, who I could push. And if I, you know, if I was the pusher, then just to go ahead and uh, push them and see what I could do, see if they could, you know, handle the pushes and, um, you know, see how the line would move. So I'm um, just, like I said, trying to find the momentum and, uh, try to stay up there. I'm glad we uh, glad we could stay up there pretty much the second half of the race and uh, uh, have a pretty good strategy there at the end. Definitely, man. Well, congrats on your race win here. Uh, Full-length Talladega race. You don't hear that every day, but you were able to get that eight Interstate Ford in victory lane. Anybody you want to thank before we get you out of here tonight? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Interstate Ford on a car. Uh, they just came back on board for this year. They were on board for last year, and, uh, you know, you know, I'm glad to have them in victory lane. You know, that's where 
that's where you know you want to put a sponsor you know victory lane just gives them more exposure and whatnot so a uh, big shout out to them and uh, also a big shout out to bennett's public cool jane's on main allen's arts images booth 34 diecast unrivaled cinematography blaze designs uh, bully dog coffee company and you can go to www.bullydogcoffeecompany.com and whatever you pick coffee wise whatever your flavor or whatnot you can go to your checkout and uh, there can be a discount code you can use and you can use brax5 for 10 percent off your order there so uh, use that if you'd like and um, you know it helps everybody out and uh, hopefully you enjoy that as well so uh, shout out to all of them and uh, you know just happy we could come away with I believe this is one of this is actually my I, my second uh, four length race win I, uh, I, I got in I got a, a good win at uh, Charlotte 600 in 2019 so um, I'm happy to get another full length win and uh, here at Talladega it's always fun definitely man well congrats once again and go celebrate yes sir I appreciate it y'all have a good one all right, so that will do it for the interviews. Let's see if we can run down the race order of finish here. We got Braxton, Deweese, Glenn Campbell, John Higman Jr., the top three that you heard from, Tyler Harrison, Joey, Joey Gatina. Tyler Harrison, Joey Gatina basically ran the race of their lives, it almost seems like, because they were the only ones that uh, didn't pit and still made it to the end, both with top five finishes. Uh, Charles Van Giac. Uh, Joe Hudson, Truth Hoke, Robert Hill, and Mark Jorgensen round out that top 10. Brandon Honeycutt, Andrew Teft, Lee Campbell, Brian Bliss, Chris Blasey round out the top 15. We roll on back to uh, Kevin Kevin Minipi, Minipace, and Brian, or Brian, Devin Shorts, Troy Thomas, Brian Wortman, Sean Dunaway round out that top 20. Stephen Hines, William Britton, Rick Webb, Connor Elliott, Kirby Wayne Scott, the top 25, Brandon Sanfilippo, Jason Burke, and Greg McConey finishes P28. So all of his hard work staying out there brings home a 28th place finish. Uh, Dakota Ramsdale, Kinsley Smith, Matt Mettler, Greg Thompson, Gregory Robinson, and Alan Bergen round out the field of 34 drivers that took part. A oh, heck of a race put on by the Racers Elite group of guys here. So with that being said, anything, Jane, Jordan, you guys want to say before we wrap it up here tonight? Yeah, and I just want to say it was a great race. You know, these guys put on a hell of a show, and, it, you know, it was a lot of fun to watch. There was there was caution. There was chaos. There was, you know, some good green flag runs, you know, some strategy. A lot of fun to watch, and, you know, I'd like to think that, you know, I learned how to deal with my uh, my announcer's jinx. You know, I didn't say Braxton's name at that one point when I could have, and you know, I, I think I li I like to think I had a hand in him. You know, getting the win here. <laughs> All I know is I had a blast calling this, and if I'm back up here for more races like this, I'm going to have more of a blast because I cannot wait for the next one. Definitely, these guys are thinking about putting together a Coke 600 on 519 so if you guys had fun watching this don't be afraid to uh join and um they'll have it open up again to 40 spots so that is a month basically a month from now on 519 so if you want more action from the racers elite series they race every tuesday wednesday and thursday here right here on sim racing media but from all the drivers of the racers elite crew and all the drivers that took part tonight and from all of us at Sim Racing Media, I want to wish you guys a good night, and we will see you next time.